I don't know. I, I, I can't defend Cloud9 after that. That is in, indefensible, what they're doing. Like, I'm not defending them this game. I know, but it says in our contracts, Thorne, that one of us has to say nice things about them, even when they play like Wait, crap. No, no, us. no. I defend TSM, not Cloud9. Oh. He's that got was, a point no, there. You guys, point one there. of you guys. You can't have to do not two me. NA teams. All right, all right. Right, okay, so one, one two, two, three. Uh, one, two. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yes! There we go. <laughs> you have to say nice things about C9. Welcome to, as this funky music from the 80s kicks in, <laughs> either the second episode of the Nines Summoning Insight presented by AT&T, or episode number 82, depending on how much of a stickler you are for chronology and the old school days. Depends which way you like to think of it. But as usual, we've got a pretty packed show for you today. Later on, obviously, remember the show schedule, as for today, is the same actually for all the shows. It always starts at 2 p.m. Pacific Coast time, 5 p.m. East Coast time, 11 p.m. Central European Standard Time, in case you're European. But you can see there, same day, 2 p.m. start time every single time. It was just the pilot that started a different day when we were doing the preview. Later in the show, we've got lots of stuff. Obviously, we're going to recap and discuss some of the big narratives, some of the talking points of the first three days. We've got a guest. Mark Z, as he calls himself, and you Americans who don't know the English language call him, I call him Mark Z. It's the way we, it's the way we run things around here. We're going to be addressing your memes. I can't even believe I'm saying a sentence like that out loud, that we're going to address your memes, but we're going to do it. So we'll see how well you did. Some of them might be good, though. I think there's a chance. The template was pretty funny. The, the template was, was, was solid. Had so. the potential to be good, I reckon, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as well as your memes, you can literally transmit the deranged things that go on inside your brain, you call them thoughts, to us directly, we have to take them into our brains, let them infect us like diseased neuron, prions from like mad cow disease or something, and then we have to respond. So what that section actually is basically, it's the Cloud9 Connections or something, is that which one's it called when you have no, the, the Discord section? No, that's just the Discord section. Oh, the, cloud, the at and is where we have the Cloud Connections, where we have Mark Z. That was the guest one, right? So they'll obviously be the feature though, where if you want to join in, it didn't work as well last time, but some teething problems there. Go on to the Discord, there's a questions channel. You can submit your questions there. Monty will look through them later, try and pre-approve someone, and then hopefully, <laughs> this time when we unmute that person, they will talk to us and communicate said thoughts. Yeah, and uh, you know, unlike, uh, unlike uh, Travis Gafford on his show where he screens people for whether or not he agrees with the right. questions, uh, you know. And whether or not Riot needs to be protected from it. And, and whether Riot important. needs yeah, to be protected. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I don't care. You can, you can ask questions even if I don't agree with them. So yeah, that's cool. Very adult approach. Yeah, yeah weird. I appreciate it. Professional. <laughs> right, so anyway, uh, first things first. Oh, nine's pretty good, actually, aren't they? No, no that's obviously, that was obviously a joke. That was all segment. Believe it or not, that was acting. I don't actually think any of those thoughts about Cloud9. But let's start off, okay? So I think the thing was, since we're recovering from the first few days of Worlds, this isn't like the first day and the first game. Obviously, there's loads of storylines we can get into. We will during this entire show. So let's just start with, like, what were the big ones that leap off the page? Like, like as someone coming into the game again, what was a big storyline for you? What was a big moment that's happened already? I mean, I really like that SKT RNG game. It was sure. really exciting. Um, I think it lived up to a lot of the expectations that we had of that group. And obviously, the ending was a crazy base race. So super entertaining. For me, that's definitely been the most entertaining game so far. Um, I think what impressed me is G2 also, their really clinical approach approach to just destroying Griffin um, really shows why they're the favorite of this tournament. They've looked absolutely amazing. Mm. The thing that stood out to me was the meta being different than what I expected it to be. There are non-80 carries played bottom, but the length of the game is a lot longer than what we've seen in summer playoffs for all the regions. Yeah, I mean, obviously a topic that we're going to discuss on the show will be scaling, right? That, that used to be the approach you took in the past if you were the weird teams, the Splices, the Golden Guardians of the world. The idea that you'd have actually elite tournaments, that potential tournament winning teams picking for scaling is so different from what we saw in the summer. It's a, pretty much a different game than what we thought we were going to be playing. Yeah, I think the champion that really drives the whole scaling thing forward is Kale. That was a champion we didn't see at all. And then she got that little bit of a buff where they gave her range autos at level 6 instead of level 11 and made the laning a lot more possible and a lot more feasible. And you see her winning lanes now. It wasn't 
um, RNG versus clutch, where there is like a mid laner difference, but the Kale was actually smashing the Syndra. I think for me, the biggest surprise has to be Group B. This was the group that everyone made fun of before the tournament because everyone said, right, FPX is easily going to win, Splice probably easily second, and who even cares about the others? Well, I've got news for you. Apparently no one else in the group thought that because that entire group, is it's, we've got nowhere closer to getting any answers now than we have at the beginning of the tournament. Like, it's actually thrown everything into disarray. I just could not imagine FPX being bad and struggling in this group, but it's actually possible. And I will give credit to J-Team. They look sure. so much better than what I thought they were going to be. Yeah, but a lot of that was throwing, too. I mean, I'm sure we're going to get into this a little bit later, but I, I think it was really disappointing to see, you know, Phoenix's results after, in that game. Yeah. Which should we talk about first, then? What do you think the first big topic was? I think that's not a bad one, the Group B one, because as I said, sure. Group B was the one that looked the most by the numbers. Obviously, FPX should be everyone. In theory, Splice should be a very strong contender for second. Instead, what you've seen is... Oh, I mean, if you notice, I, I heard a lot of people actually, when we did our predictions, I looked at other people's predictions afterwards. Most people actually were saying they thought GAM would be better than J-Team even. You know, I picked J-Team to come third. Well, as you saw here, the thing about the J-Team match there is, it's not that they played amazing. It's not that FPX played terrible. <laughs> FPX kind of just played okay, were constantly in the driver's seat the whole game, and the J-Team team just won team fights. Well, I mean, th but how did they win team fights? I mean, I, I this... LWX's performance in this game gave me shades of whoosh, you know, back in the day, just sort of inting into the back line by himself. The entire composition is built off of having this really buff front line with the Scion, but all their damage is in the Kai'Sa at the AD carry position. So if the Kai'Sa is just dying in team fights and ulting into the enemy team, you have no damage to finish out. We saw that. LWX would die and the rest of the tanks would just stand around doing yeah. nothing. So what's so powerful about Kai'Sa is she has instant backline access. That's not a tool that's given to any other AD carry. So you can just sit around and wait for cooldowns to come down and then you go in with your ultimate. You still have your E for invisibility and you can dodge stuff with it. So that's what makes Kai'Sa so powerful. And this guy, anytime there's a knockup, anytime there's CC, he would go in instantly <laughs> and die. I'm like, that is not how you play Kai'Sa. You yeah. are... Well, all pro number one AD carry from Summer Split and LPL, and this is how you play. I'm like, I, yeah. I was shocked. At the level <laughs> it was of play. terrible. What you nailed there is the saddest distinction. Is remember, this is going to be the first game some Western fans are ever seeing LWX play. They they haven't watched in the LPL team, so they're hearing this is the champion of the LPL, like one of the most dominant splits ever. You think of China, you think of AD carries, you're going to think this guy must be amazing. He's got hype coming into the tournament, and then has a performance like this against a team that's supposed to be a game. And he was set up for success too. I mean, there's tons of crowd control here. He's playing with a Galio, right? The purpose of the Scion is to be able to roam and enable him in other lanes and I, just dropping the ball in those team fights. Like you, you just can't do that because it ruins the entire purpose of the composition that you built. So I was told he'd be like Wild Turtle, but better. So I went back and watched <laughs> the games and he was like Wild Turtle, but better. He pulled the trigger at right times and he would carry the team through. But watching him at the world stage, it's not Wild Turtle, but better. It is literally just Wild Turtle. <laughs> Whereas I'll give credit, the one player on J team who I do think actually had a pretty good match overall, it has to be 4-4, four, four, their mid laner. Mm -hmm. This guy actually played his win condition on Akali very, very well. Like he, he really did weigh out the fights correctly, going on the right opponent. He never just died and got blown up instantly at the beginning of the fight. So I can't give J team, like I said, I don't give them. Like everyone wants the story when an underdog wins to be. They played so amazingly, they just eclipsed the level of FPX. No. F PX bent down, <laughs> helped these guys up. But that doesn't mean that they're anything less than a tiny little guy being lifted up like that. Look, like, J Team's not a sick team. Like, look, real. Yeah, no, it's not. And I think that realistically, if we're looking at, at Fun Plus Phoenix, part of the reason why they lost this game is because they put all their eggs in the LWX basket and then he choked. But there's a really easy way to adjust for this, which is simply to not make him the primary carry on the team through your drafts and then rely more on other players to carry that weight. Because if he's just going to choke on the stage, then make him less impactful so that, you know, if he is dying in early fights, or literally, like you're saying, Kaisa has the tools to get into the back lane, just don't give him a, 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 a <laughs> champion that can do that. Like, just don't let him do that. You can make it so he can't, right? I tried giving Turtle Ash once, and he flanked with Ash, so <laughs> this guy might do the same thing. <laughs> is that better or worse? Oh, I don't know. It's just disappointing. <laughs> is that better or worse? The problem is, realistically, that was the main storyline of Group B, so I think we just jumped right into the more, to me, the most interesting 
interesting one so far was C and D, just even in terms of the results we had. Like, in C is the one with the big three-way matchup. And as you said before, like, it might look there, like, right, RNG one and one. It's like, actually, RNG looked good in both the games they played here today. Fnatic certainly weren't bad in the SK Telecom loss. I think the storyline for me in that group, though, is SK Telecom in both their games has looked like a, at least a decent amount ahead of both the teams they've played to me. They looked in control at all times in these matches. I, I mean, with the exception of possibly the end of that RNG SKT mm -hmm. game. Sure. But they did make that very intelligent call. Like, yes. when they're coming in to the end of that game, they realized that they had a TP advantage. They realized that they had the Lich Bane advantage, which is huge for take it for base races, right, on the on the APTF that, mm -hmm. that Faker was playing. So they realized that they could just push faster and they could get more people into the base. So it, it ended up being really a fantastic play call from them. I have a lot of criticism for FKT, but we'll save it for when Mark Z gets here. <laughs> okay. right. What about on the RNG side, though? Because like I said, I came in actually, like even though I didn't pick mm -hmm. Fnatic to get out the group, I thought RNG would have a lot of flaws as a team. I thought they played pretty well in this loss against SKT. Actually. They were pretty good in team fights yep. and stuff. They were forcing the action at the right time sometimes. So I do think they look good, but their top laner, Lang X, he used to be a carry player and they kind of made him like the weak side top laner and really shows like his play on Mordekaiser was extremely disappointing. And for the rest of the team, they still play way too heavily for Uzi. So right now in the meta, yep. Rift Herald is extremely important. So whenever you win bot lane, like you win a bot lane skirmish, the first thing you think is how can we reset fast and how can we get to the top side of the map? What RNG did was they won from the bot side of the map and they stayed bot lane to maximize farm on Uzi instead of swapping fast for the Rift Herald sums. That was really disappointing to look at. But yeah, I th I, for me, that group, like the problem is SKT is the clear favorite. They've looked better. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted that to be a sexy group with the Fnatic and the RNG store, and that one's still wide open for me. I mean, obviously we've got the second round of rotations. If one of them can beat SKT, that's probably enough to win the group. There's the head-to-head -head matchup is going to be interesting, obviously. They've already had it once. Like, at the moment, I could see either Fnatic or RNG coming second out of this group. So it's right on the table. What do you think about Fnatic? And they didn't really complain about it, but they did make it publicly known that a few of their players are sick, Boipo and Broxa. The problem with that is this. I'll just say, that I'll say <laughs> one name for everyone listening to the broadcast right now, Name. <gasps> Yeah. If, you, if you just heard that name and you think, he sucks, didn't he? He did better trouble at Worlds. Then you're disqualified from this conversation because he was ill during that particular period. Yep. They even said it behind the scenes. It was known before the event. This was not like a, a theory thought up later when he failed, you know? But no Western fan cares. They go, well, you didn't perform. You just weren't as good as he thought. So, like... I, I, I agree. If you know someone's ill, I'll sort of take that into consideration, but you still have to win the game. Like, just being a pro, unfortunately, is you have to get it done. And, and fortunately, at least in terms of esports, illness often affects you vastly less than it sure. would in a physical sport, right? It's not like you're hacking up a lung, coughing while trying to run 10 miles. So it, it is a bit of a difference, right? It shouldn't be, a, it's an impediment, but not as much of one for yeah. sure. Exactly. I mean, everyone was bragging about that Michael Jordan guy getting drunk that one time and coming out and winning that playoff game <laughs> saying he had the flu. In esports, I know CSGO players who have done that loads of times and won the tournament. What's the big deal? It's Michael Jordan guys over here. What are you talking about? We're going out all the night before. Yeah, yeah that, that is uh, definitely, I think, one of the, the more shocking secrets of esports is how many hungover games have been Absolutely. played. Like, actually, ridiculous numbers <laughs> exactly how many did you play loco hungover <laughs> none, none, none. <laughs> not that many because in korea most of the games started about 4 p.m see he had a few of those 14 shakes a little bit of, water, little bit of tlc and right, right in. exactly no problem. next topic next topic <laughs> Like if we go into Group D, because in terms of real chaos, Group D is it's as wide open as when we began. Damn one, Team Liquid and yep. uh, IG all beat each other. And the way that they all beat each other, what's interesting is this is one where actually the scoreboard tells you a lot about the group. Mm -hmm. Every team really did have two good games and then one not so good game. <laughs> or Liquid had. Well, the interesting Liquid thing should is, have lost today, yeah. let's one, be real. It was actually one of Team Liquid's wins that was their worst looking game, actually. Yeah, yeah. the HQ one, they didn't look <laughs> oh, that great. And funny thing is, up until that game, I was going to tell you in Group D, I'm loving it. Because you know, I predicted Team Liquid would become come second in the group. Yep. The first two games, even their loss against IG, I was quite liking how they played, actually. They played a lot of poise. They also looked yep. they understood where they were. The drafts have been working from... Like, let's face it, if in Group C, we'd say an SKT's the best, mm -hmm. and now in Group D, Team Liquid's got all this life, both teams clearly loving a scaling meta, clearly loving going away from what we've seen earlier this year. So one thing that worries me about Team Liquid a little bit is they're banning Kale and Syndra almost every single game. 
where a lot of teams are playing Syndra bot lane, a lot of teams are playing Kale, and if Team Liquid permabanning them both from blue side and red side, that means they aren't able to play those core picks. So going into the later half of the groups, it's extremely important they pick that up or they're going to get abused in draft. I, I think also, I, with Liquid's case, I, there was a little bit of a, seems like, communication issue today surrounding their bans. Oh, the which, Rumble ban. Yeah, the Rumble ban, which is a little bit disconcerting that Core JJ like, couldn't get that last ban in there. Because that, that basically nearly lost them the game. Yeah, yeah. giving them Rumble was <laughs> Ziv, a huge... Ziv was wrecking them with those equalizers. So I, that's a little bit worrying that they would even have those issues. But I think for the most part, Liquid's, in my mind, has looked pretty good. Um, and... Conversely, on the other side, like IG, they showed up, and we talked about this in the yep. last episode, that if the Shy and Rookie can somehow get back to form, they've looked amazing. It's really the problem has been Leon and Bowland, yeah. who have been Jungle total non-factors in this tournament so far. It's like I said before, the real problem is this. It sounds like lazy analysis to say, well, if you've got a Faker-type player, if he plays well, you can win the game. But our point is they have two of them. They don't even need both to go off. Like, if yep. one of those guys goes off, and they had some moments in these games, Rookie particularly looks way back to his form. If, if they are play at the level individually they do in this group, already that's a problem for the damn ones in the team because they don't have as good players in theory. That's the area IG always was actually, like, probably underrated now that they're not considered a top team, is they still have a banging lineup of players. They have some amazing talent in that squad. Yeah. And in theory, in every lane. They actually have triple threat. Jackie Love, exactly. Rookie. It's one of the true real triple threat teams you can have and really play through all three lanes if you want. It's true. It's just a little bit disappointing that the support and jungler are so weak. Like, there's such a contrast between those three and the other two. It's like a vast chasm the problem, of skill. The, the real problem for their team, unfortunately, is that they did lose the jungler, that they lost Ning, because basically he himself... He not only like perfectly fit their style, like his own idiot as a it. player was how they played anyway. And he was kind of like he was like a Chinese clid, as it were. Like he was a super aggressive player who wanted to go for the fight. So even though I can see why they've managed to stabilize the team with this new guy now, it's not the same as when you literally have five players who on paper <laughs> were all bangers. Like like Baolan was always a bit overrated, but you know, in the context that everyone else is a stud, you're gonna look very good. I wanna give one silver lining to Team Liquid in this group. The biggest worry that a lot of people had for TL was x Mitty. How is x Mitty going to look on the world stage, especially versus teams like Down One and Invictus? And he actually showed up, and I think Jake had great ganks all throughout. His Baron Steel versus AHQ was extremely crucial. So TL, I, st I had them first in that group, and I still am going to stand by that prediction. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at some of your memes before we have Mark Z on to really break in. I want to talk more, much more in depth about some of these yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. We've got loads of time. Yeah, but uh, we're, we're going to take a look at some of the memes. So last week, or yes, last week, <laughs> I know what days are, um, <laughs> we had you guys submit memes with hashtag the nines based on a picture we posted on Twitter. Uh, now the winner will get a Puma gift certificate if you are indeed over 18 and live in North America. Now we're not, I don't think, going to do a picture for Wednesday's show, so in two days' time, in between the group round robins. But if you guys are going to submit us your best Worlds meme, any meme at all, with hashtag the nines, we will see it. And we'll put out tweets later about that as well. So you can be on the show and have your shot to win some Puma gear. So I'm going to go over, and we'll take a look at some of them right, right now. All right. So number one here. They didn't use the green screen. <laughs> But we did have TSM will make it out of groups, which is, of course, the, the refrain of that the That is fans. how Loco would respond if he, <laughs> if he was told <laughs> Somewhat just surprised. A bit, a bit confused, a bit puzzled, <laughs> and generally just underwhelmed. <laughs> oh, God. TSM jokes are so overdone. <laughs> no. You know what? Apparently, Bjergsen you know, doesn't agree. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what, Loco? We had to put up with this garbage for years exactly. from them. It wasn't garbage when I was saying it. No. You know, it, it was the fans. It was okay. the fans, Loco. They were so ob obnoxious. Mm -hmm. And so now I love the TSM fans saying, like, why do you guys hate us so much? It's like, do you understand the abuse that was piled on everyone who was not a TSM fan by TSM fan for years? Exactly. It's going to go on forever now. You created a monster, TSM fans. This is, you reap what you sow. Anyway, <laughs> enough about that. Let's move on. Well done, though. Here's the thing. One thing I'm always looking for is the actual meme makes sense. That actually made sense. It all, it all checked out. The, it, it does. The context, everything. So that was at Lazie on Twitter. So let's check out number two here. We've got three to pick from for our winner. Green Shorts Lol on Twitter. 
You were trying to be part of the hot take club, Loco. <laughs> <laughs> Which you do say Campbell beats That wasn't life. even a meme. He did actually. <laughs> like, that was a real thing he said. He bet on it even. <laughs> that, that, that wasn't even a meme. <laughs> uh, I have a random comma here. Only plebs, comma, sleep on our Korean overlords. You don't actually need that comma, green yeah. shorts, but that's fine. Surprise, surprise, good teams only lose versus good teams. Mm. That's almost there. The problem is I did actually predict some pretty edgy ones, like Team Liquid placing ahead of like of Dan Warner's, you know. I picked some ones that are a little bit off from that. He's right, though. I generally just tend to go, obviously, with the favourites. I looked so derpy in that picture. I can't believe they used that picture of me. Why'd you make that face, Loco? I, I, don't, I couldn't see like what, what face I was making. They took the picture, so they are like, this looks great. We're going to use this for the template. Wow, this sounds like a really good meme for next week that you guys can use. So just cut out his head and use it for something. Oh, anyway, God. on to the next one. Next one, please. <laughs> D Wheel 21. Guys, how do I rotate text? Do you guys know the context behind this one? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, Is this the, from the group draw? No, it's not actually. Um, it's from. I'm not sure if I should even say the site name. <laughs> it's an infamous site that ends in .org. Uh huh. Okay. There's not a lot. It's a. It's a number, <laughs> yes, and I, then four letters, yes, and that was. what you're saying. Can I say it on broadcast? <laughs> what, what site it is? <laughs> I, uh, sure. <Okay. laughs> but on that site, there's new users that come on the site, and then they aren't able to rotate text, so that's like a very frequent <laughs> oh, Got question it. asked. So there you go. And that's all of them. So which one do you guys want? I mean, that one was rubbish, so that one definitely isn't <laughs> I think probably the first one. I like the, the first one. The first one was the best, yeah. Like the first one was an actual meme. The third one was some rubbish in joke. The second one was just people putting like what we actually might have written on the piece of paper. Like, that, the second guy didn't get the concept of the meme whatsoever. He was like, I'm helping guys. He's like, that was rubbish. And the third one is like, do you remember that other website that has nothing to do with esports? Like sort of, but like, you know, just me and you get it now, not everyone else. So number one wins. It actually fulfilled the criteria. I like Sounds the good. first one because it doesn't use the derpy picture. Exactly. exactly. Logo's more concerned with uh, how he looks and how funny it is. Mm -hmm. Like a true entertainer, right? <laughs> So anyway, if we wanted to fit in more awkwardly constructed memes that barely relate to League of Legends, we'd be doing a different type of broadcast. Now back to the show. So, should we talk again about some actual topics in the tournament then? Let's, let's, uh, let's go to Mark Z next and, okay. and have a conversation with him. So we're going to come back with Cloud Connections, brought to you by AT&T and AT&T, AT&T, AT t t at and t yeah, that's right. I said AT and T. AT and T. We got there eventually. So we'll see uh, you guys in just a few seconds with Mark. Everybody thought I was nothing Living for a play by play I was always on to something And I was doing it my own damn way Yeah, nobody get me like I do I ain't never be the same as you Just trying to break up Everybody try to put me in a box But I'm getting kind of tired of breaking locks Gonna live my life if that's okay I'ma do it, yeah, I do it, yeah, I do it my way Stand back, watch me play, I'ma prove it And all the shade they throw at me, well, I'm a gonna use it I ain't afraid, I'm where I belong they said that I was nothing Well nothing's got something going on Everybody thought I was nothing Now they do it, try to do it Wanna do it my way Well, this is Cloud Connections, brought to you by AT&T. I can actually say it with only two Ts this time. And we have Mark Z, another guy who doesn't get to go to the World Championship here with us. Sad probably, days. Probably really interesting guy to talk to with a lot of original <laughs> ideas then. Probably not. That's why, that's why I'm not there. Okay. Nice to have you on. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. I, I'm I've been holding back a lot of opinions. 
saving them for the you know TV <laughs> show where I can really let them loose. So I'm excited to be here. You must have been saving a ball season after being on the right broadcast then. Oh uh, no, I, I still get a couple, <laughs> of, a couple in there, but but yeah, a little more, little less filtered here. Hopefully. Do you remember when Local when he joined Team Liquid that first piece of content they had called Local Let's Loose? Yeah, yeah I do remember end, that. He would do that ridiculous thing where he'd go like, "I'm not crazy." I'm, I'm just local. Local. I, that was my favorite. So badly Wait, good. what? I, I that. still do that. So that was, I the real reason we made him. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Monty. I love it. That was the only reason we made him coach was to get him out of there. Like, stop saying that you're you're the coach now. You need to kill that show. I liked it, Loco. I thought it was Thank a great you, catchphrase. It amused me greatly. I still use it. That's my, still my outro for I love YouTube. it. I love it. <laughs> What's wrong with it, Duncan? I'm just jealous because you don't have a good one for yourself. <laughs> well, I've got loads of good ones. Anyway, <laughs> let's start here. Right, Coming into this tournament, one of the things I was even shocked by when I watched all these games is that the meta is so radically different to what everyone assumed was going to be the case. Like, we spent all these months talking about what G2 is going to do and all, Fnatic and all these squads with amazing earlier games. What do you think of the way the meta is so far shaken out over the first few days? Part of me isn't too surprised. I think it's definitely slower than people were thinking it would be, but I think some of it might be just due to nerves. I think a lot of teams have looked really shaky with some of their, their like, decision-making, and they might be holding back a little bit. But when you see, like how G2 is playing, uh, you know, like the game they just played versus C9 today was super crazy. Uh, Splice's game versus J Team today was was relatively action-packed in the early game. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think teams will start picking the pace up a little bit, especially uh, as they get a little bit more comfortable on stage, but it is overall still way slower than, than I think people were expecting. I'm also surprised, like one of the things we were talking about coming in is, are there gonna be a, a big meta difference between the teams that boot camped in Europe versus the teams that boot camped in Asia? And I'm not really seeing no. that big of a meta difference actually it seems like there's kind of a consensus about what here or like what champions are strong to play so i'll say there's a tiny bit on it for so the eastern teams they play kale and one common pattern has been the western teams whenever they play the eastern teams they will ban the kale and also on the reverse the western teams they play Syndra bot so the eastern teams when they play against the western mm. teams is ba ban Syndra. so those are like the picks that are popping up but they're getting banned so we actually don't get to see it but there is a difference in how they are banning there's also the vladimir which north america seems to not prioritize too highly they leave it up and they've played atrox into it twice and gp once mm -hmm. uh with tl so i think maybe that's another one that that people might come to more of a consensus on because the two times i've seen atrox played into it, it looks great so i'm not sure if that means other teams are playing Aatrox, or they're going to start playing Aatrox, or if the Vladimir needs to be played differently, and that's why it's getting, it's losing these matchups really badly. Let's start by talking about Team Liquid then, because we can actually talk about the Aatrox Vlad and then the the uh, <laughs> Vlad GP matchups, because obviously they won the game with the Aatrox uh, into the Vladimir, looked really good. Impact had a really strong solo performance in that game, mm -hmm. and then he was kind of invisible in the other game when he was playing Gangplank uh, up against uh, IG. So let's start with their first match, right? So when TL was playing with the Aatrox and they had that super dominating performance, it was, I, a lot of people were crediting Impact with that solo kill or at least chunk it before this team fight started. Against the, remember, against a team where their best player is supposed to be the yep. top player and he's the guy people are hyping. And they let him have the Vlad. The best Korean top player, you know. And Vlad, Vlad is a specialty that they let him have, yes. right? So. I think Teal had a really good draft going in. I think Zarvan Galio as a combo, we saw it a lot back in spring, how powerful it can be. And people are just picking it up again now that Galio's got buffed and it's a, really good engage system. It works perfectly well in teamfight and it buys a lot of space for champions like Kai'Sa to go crazy, champions like LeBlanc to go crazy. So yeah, I think much props to how TL drafted. Like they've always been an intelligent team when it comes to drafting, long as they have the champion pulled to make it work. It's when they play with teams that have much wider pulls, they struggle a lot. Yeah, and I think Jensen had a really good game. He had a CS lead on on Showmaker, died once to the, the uh, Gragas Yasuo crap that people, that's like, everyone it's died. Yeah, 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 it's undodged. Yeah, it's undodged. He died that. with it once, it's like, okay, that's fine. Uh, and, and it was actually a pretty good performance from him, all things considered. Yes. He also had a really nice W Ford in that, that game winning team mm -hmm. fight. So mm -hmm. that was a game where it felt like for the most part, TL was clicking on all cylinders, mm -hmm. uh, and it was those other games that came later where it's maybe some of the, the expectations came down a little bit. This is where I, I want to know, like maybe they have to win this group for it to happen or something. I want to know what moment did the rest of the world actually update their narrative on Team Liquid? Why is everyone still using the narrative from last year? Like everyone says before every tournament the same thing. Impact probably just get wrecked by all the carry tops in Korea. Oh, Smithy, isn't he an old relic of a jungler? Jensen didn't look that great during the split. Like. 
it's actually been consistent this year. Like, the team has... I, I describe them as a team that just plays to the level of their opponent. Like, if they play in NA, they'll barely beat the top teams. You've seen now, you put them against even international teams with really good players... They're never out of these games. They're not getting battered in any of these. Even in the IG game, they were, they were holding their own for a long time. No, I think it's just a little bit of just bias against North America because historically we suck. And I think that's relatively <laughs> fair to say. Like, yes, C- C9 is the exception to the rule. Sure. But like a North American number one seed has never gotten out of groups. Um, it's only been C9 to get out of groups. That's why we've got to change the narrative, right? Except for the, TSM in 2000. Yeah, I mean, this right, team, the one, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they didn't come first, though. The difference is this team actually deserves it. They're a number one seed, and they live up to it when they come international. Well, it's right. legit. I think the MSI thing was everyone was wondering, is that a fluke or exactly. not? And and I think they've pretty much answered that by this, at this point. That not really. Like, I don't think so. No. I mean, maybe they shouldn't really. You know, they're still a worse team than IG, but sure. they're not so bad that that was just some insane fluke by IG that they lost. Right. Mark, so I talked about it earlier, where the West bands. Um, Kale and the East bans Syndra. Right. TL bans both in almost all their games. Are you worried for them at all in the second half of groups? It a little bit. It reminds me. I think it was Worlds where Jensen wasn't playing a Kali and they were banning it every game. Mm. Uh, I might be. I might be getting it wrong. There was. It was either Silas or a Kali or one of the that power trio that was going on with Aatrox as well that that C9 couldn't play. And I think Jensen sometimes is a little slow to pick things up, but. I, I don't know. I mean, they have the, seemingly their own answers to things, so maybe it's just like a safety for right now and they'll adapt as they go because you're not really sure what you're playing into and so you just kind of ban the most obviously popular things, which Syndra's one of them, Kale's one of them, and, and it might not be like, a, oh, we absolutely can't play this situation. I'm hoping that's what it is, but it, it could be. I mean, worth noting that it was Damwon that banned Syndra in their game here, where, whereas Team Liquid banned Kale. I want to talk about the game that they played against IG because that one was really interesting to me, and... You guys are saying that I, I don't think this game was particularly close, actually, because I think the problem with these compositions in the draft is that when we saw the rookie and shy get control over the Baron pit, the issue with playing the gangplank and impact not really having a presence in this game is that if you lose control with gangplank, you can't set up barrels. Like you, it's very difficult to barrel into an objective or mm-hmm. set yourself up in a way that you can do a lot of damage. Meanwhile, it's super easy to catch people in a choke with a Vlad ult and a shockwave, right? So we're talking about a situation where the gangplank kind of has to have a map presence advantage to be the most effective it can be, and it's really hard to regain that once you lose the vision control. One thing that really shocked me about this game, um, I'll go back to the gangplank, gangplank point in a little bit, TL is a team that's really good about practice plays, and they know how valuable Rift Herald is. I mean, they play in NA, they play, play versus Clutch all the time. IG made a lot of mistakes around bot lane, and TL got ahead in bot lane. It was past 10 minutes, Dragon wasn't coming up. Instead of swapping their bot side to top, they had Gragas come back bottom and try to go for another gank through the lane. I'm like, just swap, you're ahead in tempo. You're winning boss side. Why would you not swap? Like GP and 1v2 situation can infinitely clear with his ult and barrels and just take Carold. And they didn't do that play and they went kind of went for like a kill mid lane. Jensen died and they ended up falling behind so much. It was so shocking to me because Teal is that team that is excellent when it comes to this is a set Herald play. This is a set Dragon play and they didn't pull through with it. Uh, I'm curious how much of that is like a problem they're going to keep having or like a, a single game problem because they had really good plays in the early game. Smithy mm-hmm. set up a gank in the top and bot lane and both them, his Q barrel was like a, a millimeter off, off yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and if he was able to land kills. both those, it's two more kills. Uh, gangplank, the point um, about not being able to set up correctly with him is, is a big problem, but even when they did have vision control advantage, he almost never landed a barrel chain. Mm. He, he just had, I mean, we all know Impact's a great GP, so I'm not going to you know, say he's bad at it, but he had a bad game on it. He did not land enough poke uh, around objectives to properly set up, and then eventually they lost control and they're making these bad <coughs> macro plays like you're talking about, sure. and then the most egregious one that lost in the game was, you know, they were just super late on a reset where they didn't have any wards to drop before they, they're yeah. back, so they just... Enemy team keeps vision control, resets faster, gets to bear, and then you're just blind face checking. This and, is also, and you can't blind face check into a no. fed Oriana. With a fiddlesticks and like, yeah, yeah, it's just a nightmare. There's also the factor as well, like, let's face it, you obviously had Vladimir come in for the shy, which is already one of his best picks yeah. anyway, when it's not in the meta. And he's actually known for, bit. that's one of the ways he built his rep, is like winning... Not Unwinnable time, matchup. But the yeah. matchups you're not supposed to be able to. So even though that doesn't look like a dead draft when you give him that, like that kind of is like the shy is going to mess a lot of people up with a champion like that. If you look at IG's draft, it's Vladimir, Olaf, Oriana, Kaifa, Fiddle. They have no one tanky and they have no one that can really face check brushes. One thing that Vladimir did that was so crucial for IG was game was stalemated. TL had all the vision 
And the shy made a solo kill happen in top lane where it wasn't supposed to happen. He created something out of nothing, and it allowed IG to get pressure back where they shouldn't have been able to. When they don't have vision control, they're not supposed to be able to check into a Rakan, they're not supposed to be able to check into a Gragas, mm. but he's creating holes where TL has to go deal with it and give up some of the control they had. And eventually, they were able to get Baron that way. I mean, at least with the Olaf, when you have ult up, there is a way out, right? Because it's going to drop the CC, so you can, but it, it's... It, and you it, can only do that Face one. checking, exactly, is predicated around a cool, an ult cooldown with Olaf. And they do have some more tools. Like you can just throw axes, you can throw the ball into things. Mm -hmm. so they have some ways to, to look at this stuff, but they're, yeah, I mean, TL just needs to actually poke out correctly when they, when they are doing that, uh, and I don't think that they did a good job uh, mechanically of, of punishing IG's face, or like, you know, scouting attempts. Okay. If we transition a bit then, a team I definitely want to get your oh, take on. Oh, let's let's talk about the last liquid game first <laughs> yes, that happened please. today because I, I we got it. Like, this oh, is we can't, I, this whole lead up has been into this yeah. like yeah, but we garbage can't do every game like this. garbage we can't fire. Just twenty minutes. No, 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 every map. no, no, no. We're yeah. not going to. I just wanted to talk about liquid yeah, okay. progression because you know we were talking sure. about their performance. So I actually think their performance has been really interesting in sure. that it has been up and down. But we we have to talk about this AHQ game that they played today because they really really should have lost that game. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for Xmithy randomly stealing that Baron, they would definitely have lost that game. And it was just, it was just crap. Like, it was so bad. It's, it's a game that I'm actually really happy they won because, like, people are going to have, you know, variance in their performance game over game. That's, like, the worst game I think I've ever seen Jensen play, uh, like, at, in a group stage game, basically. Uh, he, he was Pretty so... Pretty nice if you still win it, then. <laughs> yeah, so bad. That's what I'm saying. Is like, exactly. I don't think he'll play a game that bad the rest of the tournament. So, like, if that's, like, the worst game you're going to see... Oh, and you win it? Great. Uh, and I think uh, there are other problems, too. Obviously, it wasn't limited to just Jensen, but he was, he was the one where I was, I was just shocked how yeah, bad he agreed. was playing. He was, he was feeding his face off. Uh, the whole team just as well had problems. Uh-oh. We got to talk about because you were tweeting today and discovered the draft issue, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I, got, <laughs> I got it wrong initially. The I, Core JJ I, Rumble thing. Yeah, the Core JJ yeah. Rumble thing as well because they, they basically gave, like, the, they, it was, that's a clutch draft. That's Rumble. That's Kiana, that's Silas. Kaisa, mm -hmm. Silas. That's literally what they played against months ago. And, like, it, Ziv is well-known to be a, a Rumble player. Like, there's no way that you want to give this up. Um, but Michael Artress initially tweeted that um, they trying to find couldn't it. get the, the ban in because of a language issue. Mm -hmm. And they said the refs didn't give them time. And then eventually Riot came out and clarified that... Uh, TL gave the all clear at the top when they were supposed to check for language issues, and they said, we're good. And so when they got into the draft phase, it's right. like, you, you've already basically you know, said it's not an issue. You know this is the second time that's happened to TL? You're going to talk about the Piglet one? Yeah, not this iteration of TL, <laughs> yeah. but that's why, what if it, we had, what, Ramus support? Yeah, Ram we, we had Ramus <laughs> support. You wanted Ezreal, you got Ramus. Yeah, we got Ramus support because we couldn't find a champion because it was in Korean that time, or it was in English when it was supposed to be in Korean yeah. that time. I mean, this game was horrible for TL, but the fact that they win it should make you actually feel very happy. What? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it, was on a, it was off a barren steal. You can't count on that. I'm not counting on that. I'm saying, like, I also don't count on Jensen to go one and no, six no. on Orion. Here's the real question, then. Based on this, so Team Liquid had a win that was looked really sick over Dam one. They even looked good in IG game until they lost it. IG was overall better. But then they had this disastrous game. Dam one lost to Team Liquid, but then got it back with the IG yep. win. Mm -hmm. IG themselves have obviously lost the game. So the question is, of these three, who is for real in Group D? Who is the team here? Which two of the three are going out here? What's your pick? You can change your pick from whatever it was for. I'm, I'm, I never tweeted my pick, so I, don't okay. think, so I can just pretend. Who did you right. originally have, though? I, I had actually Damwon and IG. I didn't right. Oh, my yeah. God. You traitor. I, I, <laughs> you traitor. I definitely overrated Damwon. Um, nuclear is worse than I thought he was. Naguri has his problems. Yes. Um, but you bought into the hype. I bought into the hype. How much of Korea did you watch before buying into the hype? A, a good amount. Like, yeah? I, I actually thought Canyon was going to be... Like, Canyon was the guy who I was yeah, yeah. more excited about and why... He was a stunt in Korea. And I was, well, he was the MVP of the season. Yeah, and he, he had some up and down games, but that's fine. And Korean then, MVPs mean nothing, by the way. I know. They're, they, they're they voting weird... crap. I've yeah. participated for years anyway. Yeah, moving past that. <laughs> even beyond the MVP, just like watching his games, he was good. And then... Uh, I had concerns about Smithy, so I thought that yeah, yeah. you know that was okay. going to be a potential exploit. Do you change then? Do you stick with those two? I think I do. Uh, yeah. Why does really? they all make it then? I'm I'm not sold on on their consistency. It feels like someone's always having an off game. Okay. Like Core JJ wasn't even that good in in the AHQ game, uh, and so I think as Damwon and IG and Team Liquid all get more comfortable on the stage, I think. They'll, they'll have problems. Uh, and, and Smithy's been incredible in the same way. I'm like, I don't think Jensen will be that bad. I don't think Smithy will... He's the best jungler in the group right now, I'd say, actually. 
And I don't wow. think he'll stay that way. I think he, I think he is. I think he's better than Leon. I think he's well. It's better definitely Canyon. better than two of them. The two of the argument is Canyon. Yeah, two of them. It's exactly. And the other one's an HQ player. So let's all calm down. It's all reasonable. It's not that strong of a statement when you really look into it. But Canyon's been good. But I think Smithy's been absolutely incredible in every game. I I just looked at this game versus AHQ and I, I I was appalled at the way they were clustering around like the Rumble Ooh. ult like yeah. Ziv was just wrecking them with the Rumble ults then they'd steal the Oriana ult with Silas and use it on them I, they were just their positioning was so weird versus a Rumble it was like they were giving him maximum value you're not feeling and, like, liquid and it was the, are you going to change yours yeah like, that's that's a good point where are you going with this it was for real in Group D so I said I Keep said I said, said I said in the I said in the show. That the issue was, right, coming in that I wasn't confident in Rookie and the Shy returning to form. Okay. I think they have returned to mm -hmm. form. So now my concern is that... They have two dead weights. They have, yes, they have extreme dead weights at, at support and jungle. But they're still able to win some of these games. But at least, at least you know what you're getting with IG. I feel like they've had very consistent performances, whether it's been very good from three of the players and pretty bad from the other two. But at least if you have consistency, you can create strategies around that, right? Just give the, the hard carry champions the hard carry players. Like, at this point with Team Liquid, I don't even know what to think, because in one, one game, like, Impact's popping up. Impact saved the game against AHQ today, too. Uh, oh, yeah, because yeah. Jensen got caught again. Yeah, because yeah. because they were just getting dumpstered by the Kiana ults and also the equalizer, right? They were just getting wamboed left and right, and Impact saved the game at the end. So between that and Xmithy Smite, but I, I just can't deal with these super inconsistent performances we're seeing from Team Liquid individually because you can't craft a strategy around that. The only thing that works in their favor is that arguably Baolan... Uh, and um, nuclear are like the weak points on the teams that they're playing against, and that should be TL's strength. So, like, if they can exploit the bot lanes while their solo lanes hopefully play like they did against Damwon in game one, then then they can probably get out. But I just I don't have enough faith in their solo laners after seeing um, you know the shy and rookie okay. and, and showmaker when he had a good game. You know? So local, the thing is, I'm loath to brag about my own things, but I did say that IG would be the best team and team could come second. So obviously, I don't have any problems whatsoever. I know who's for real. It's still the same teams. <laughs> you change your picks though. So I had TL Dom one coming out. Do I want IG over either? Yeah, I, I think Dom one IG. I, think, I agree I think with Mark. IG's the most the most certain. Really? Yeah, I had them second, but I would I would definitely flop them to first. You don't think they're drafted wonky sometimes? They, yeah, like they, they win are. In spite of it all. Yeah, like, <laughs> Bowland looked terrible. I, that's not what I want to hear. I, it doesn't matter. Like I'm just saying, like the shy and rookie are potentially the best top mid combo in this entire tournament mm -hmm. if they're in form and they're looking pretty damn good. Oh, God. I, I want to stick by TL. I think TL should fix their draft problems. I would love it if they picked up Kill, and I think it's fine to open up Syndra. I don't think either of the bot lanes are really going to play Syndra, and if Rookie plays Syndra mid, it's not that big of a problem. So I'll keep TL at number one. I'll, I'll go to TL IG, switching from TL down Okay. One. The classic local switching of the horses in midstream. You told me to switch. You <laughs> said we should switch. Yeah. The whole point of this game was to you told me to switch. Exactly. <laughs> I want you to be a laughing stock of just by the wind of the wind just blows just, just, way, and you're like, oh, look, today I think TSM's bad. Look, well, look, you know, Loco. You never say that. But, you know. yeah. That's not the way the world works. Exactly. You can have freedom to change your mind, but that doesn't mean you don't get judged for it. Uh, what? <laughs> you can be wrong. You can be wrong. You're not a flip flopper. Are we going to talk about Bjergsen? Oh, you resign, right. yeah. All right, let's talk about it. Can we get it. his thoughts? Yeah, why not? So what I, do you think of this? I, I'm sorry. I don't have any interesting thoughts on this. I think it was the right move for both people. I thought it was going to happen the entire time. You think it was right for Bjergsen? For both parties, it's the right move? I That's think, pretty debatable. <laughs> I, I, I'm just not one of those people who's like, man, 100 Thieves would give him a better shot at winning. I, I don't actually think that. Uh, what do you think of TSM's management of their roster the last two years? Not good. But what do you think? What do you think of 100 Thieves? <laughs> Well, Papa Smithy was they, just Papa Smithy has now been put in charge of it, right? So we can't really judge it because he has been been given complete control of this roster. So we don't know what they're gonna do. Wait, wait, totally Mark, fair. Last two years, who did better job of managing their roster? Hundred Thieves, TSM, TSM, TSM. Hundred TSM didn't literally blow their roster up when they had a winning formula. <laughs> what they didn't blow their roster up when they I had a count, winning formula? I don't count the the, the Sven double lift trade thing. He's, do, he's doing the like uh, starting now. <laughs> starting now. <laughs> starting. <laughs> starting now. <laughs> starting. <laughs> they had three MVPs on their roster. Three MVPs. Pre franchising. Pre franchising. Week one exactly. of spring 2016 and onwards. Hundred Thieves did worse. Not counting the off season. 
<laughs> counting, okay, so <laughs> thinking back on how much experience TSM has had, whatever. thinking back on how much experience TSM has had compared to how much experience 100 Deeps has had, I think 100 Deeps did a better-ish job. And if we project into the future, I think 100 Deeps will do a better job. Maybe. I just like how he's, he's, just, he's just crapping on Papa Smithy before Papa Smithy I'm not, I'm not, I don't have any basis for Papa Smithy. <laughs> I talked about this on, on Hotline Lee once, but I was just like, I don't know. Like, I, I think he's a smart, capable guy, but I'm not going to just be like, he's a great GM well, to with, be fair, with no basis. It's ob- obviously. And, yeah. you know, it's a very, very different job, right? Uh, when you're, because it's all about the personal relationships and the way you're going to conduct, like, actually structure your team. So it's a difficult job. And it's, yeah. it's the, I think he has the background to do it. Absolutely. In and of that he comes from, I mean, he has, like, the perfect background in that he was, like, a school psychologist for small children. And considering pro players have <laughs> the emotional maturity of elementary schoolers, I thought it's actually, like, pretty good, right? The one I'm glad I don't like about this story, and I really don't like about it, is if you know the way the poaching rules work in league, you have to expressly make it clear that you want to talk to other teams, that you want to have them involved in negotiations. So my concern is this, right? Bjergsen, maybe he'd had a bad split in terms of individual form, right? But in terms of the scale, the like scale of the league and the scope of his name, he should be the LeBron of the LCS. Like he should be mm-hmm. the guy where when he has a free agency period, even if he re-signs with that team, he should be looking at all the best deals in the world. Like 100 Thieves should come and make him an yeah. offer. And Cloud9 should even make him an offer. And the idea is all of these teams either offer, you know, more dollar amount or they can go the other route and say, I'll make you this team, we make that squad. So my concern there is it sounds from the way it's been delivered to us at the moment as news, as Cos Bjergsen just wanted to stay at TSM anyway, they all just got together in a room and just said, just give me a better deal. If it's a good deal, I'll go. Whereas even if you were going to re-sign with TSM, at least hear all the offers out, you know, like try and make it the best possible deal even yes. with TSM on that angle. That way you have no regrets when you go into it. Because this kind of is, if you look at how long his career, maybe the last big contract of his career. The one small thing was the Washington Post article saying that Riot, TSM, and Bjergsen had been working on the specifics of the deal. Oh, that make, kills me. To make sure that like it was kind of legal or whatever. Uh, that's that's probably that's why a bit worrying, I think yeah. he didn't go to free agency. It was just okay. like, you know, I've already gone through all this work to make sure I can get a portion of TSM as a part of my, my, sure. my deal. Free, can we I talk think- about that part, which is incredibly problematic, by the way? Yeah. And I know, uh, you know, Reginald probably doesn't think this is a problem because he's like, remember when I was a player and also the owner of a team? Yeah. Uh, I did really well, which was false because here's here's the main issue. When... People will say, well, yes, TSM was winning anyway, but this was before the era when Reginald was playing where coaches were really a part of it. And TSM was winning at the time, but I think they could have done even better if they had actually invested in infrastructure and coaching. But it is fundamentally impossible to coach someone when they own the organization or a partial owner. How do you discipline them? How can they be removed from the roster? It's it's ridiculous to think, like, sure, it could be good for Bjergsen to have partial ownership in this team, but it gives him a very strange power over the coaching staff, over the, his managers, over the other not players on the roster. Not that that was ever a problem already. Yeah, not that that was ever an <laughs> issue before. Yeah, that's but why now, it's fine. But now it's, it's out there. Problem. But now it's out sure. there, and yeah. it's, like, it's real. Yeah. And I, I just don't think that having pl- active players as part of an ownership group is a good Here's another strategy. obvious reason it doesn't work. The, Bjergsen himself, the problem with top pro players is they always think they're going to remain top pro players. And the one thing you'll never convince a pro is, you know what, in like a year you might be terrible. They'll be like, no way, I'm, look, I'm good now. I'll keep my level up. What Bjergsen hasn't probably thought about with this deal is, this is your last deal with, with, in League of Legends, Bjergsen, because if in two or three years, let's say you want to leave TSM and go somewhere else, that's not even an option. You have to sell your, your equity at that point in time. You can't yep. play against a team you own. And I'm sure it's like most... And they'll retire you if you have to have the equity anyway. So if you get like borderline, they're just going to take you up the lineup. Well, right. and, and I'm sure it's like uh, equity in startups where it's a vesting period. Yeah, sure, I'm sure it is. So he has to play for them, for, yep. uh, assume it's standard four, four more years before he gets... Yeah, 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 just because he has a two-year contract doesn't yeah. mean that it's all going to vest exactly. over those two years. Yeah. It could vest... There could be some aspect of this deal, so like which I is implied, he stays with the org as a figurehead or as a coach. this is the problem, as I just implied. That leads to a world in which, whether he chooses to or not, he might be forced out of the starting lineup because he doesn't have an option to go somewhere else. He doesn't have an option to transfer to another team unless he gives up all this, the ownership he just took. I, I just can't even believe that Riot would allow this to occur. This is I know it's crazy, crazy, isn't it? Riot not really closely defining the rules, <laughs> applying them in an almost arbitrary and sometimes biased way. <laughs> and then eventually, at the end of it, no one really knows which way it goes or who to complain to. <laughs> <laughs> it has to get worse now, no? 
which jungler are you going to bring in that can actually speak up to Bjergsen? So SKT had a really similar problem where Faker would pretty much overpower any kind of jungler that was given to him, and Clid really fixed that, and Clid has his own voice, and that was against Faker, who was a ginormous figurehead. Now, Bjergsen is going to be even a bigger figurehead on TSM can than we Faker just is on Can we just give one second. to a jungler? What? Can we just acknowledge for a second that Reginald, his main problem in TSM was it was a pretty good team. It was like one of the better teams in the world, definitely the best in North America. It was winning, but a lot of people said he was in the way. The problem is the owner is the mid laner as well, and so how could the jungler ever have parity? <laughs> You've now created the same scenario. That's what I'm saying. Why That's what that? I'm saying. Why have you done that again? That's what I started by again. saying. <laughs> I, mean, I, I just think the entire thing is just so wacky that they would repeat, because like I, I said earlier, like, he could think it worked earlier, but that was before there was real infrastructure. That, that doesn't mean it's going to work now. The world has changed. If you thought it was bad, right, during the split, one of the things that shocked people was when one of the players was streaming a TSM player, he accidentally flashed onto this, like, Excel document they had. Oh, yeah. Where they were listing, like, all the mistakes you made in your scrims and, you know, the players would review the VODs or whatever. Imagine the equivalent of that, but Bjergsen literally could just fire you from the org. He's just looking yes. over after the game, like, mm, your performance review. I'm going to say it was a... <laughs> I'm not satisfactory ganky around the middle of the like, <laughs> This could be a nightmare. I don't want to see him go down some dark, like, Sunset I, Boulevard type and go. I, I'm not saying, like, he doesn't have the power, obviously, to fire people. He's like, people, I'm ready for my ganky in the middle of the But he, the problem is, the problem is, is not that he's, like, he's writing pink slips to his his <laughs> his teammates. The problem is, is that since he, he already is... already did that anyway. <laughs> since he is in a position <laughs> to be basically unfireable, yeah, exactly. then everyone else, he can just do whatever he wants because everyone else is expendable except for him. Mm -hmm. And my other problem with, uh, I think we could read into this further because there's another issue, which is, is this going to be normal for contracts for players? Like, I think it opens this crazy Pandora's box where good players on bad teams can start trying to demand, demand equity, equity yeah, which no one else is going to get, but it creates a very weird tension. There's, there's the other issue too, which what does this say about TSM that they had to give him equity to stay? That's not, that's not a good sign for TSM as an organization. That's like that Kanye line where he says that Nike had to give LeBron a billy so he wouldn't run away. <laughs> Remember that classic line? Probably shouldn't no. reference that particular sponsor, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Presented Luck by Puma. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it's Bjergsen. I don't think Bjergsen will I was use say, the power. Yeah. Like, if it was someone else, then I think it'd be hugely problematic, it's, but Bjerg is like the, at least a right She's very chi player. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> You don't think... I think there's way worse star players. Man, I'm going to start player. a hashtag so that people who've been a jungler in TSM can just come forward with their experiences. Man alive. Okay. It's outrageous. But, but going back to... Talking like, about going back to what it says about TSM as a team, like... Why would you, why would you ever, it says, it's very bad that they would have to be even in a position to give up equity instead of just money. That's, that is a bad position. Well, equity also says you're part of us, your family. Money doesn't This isn't a that. Disney movie, it's a business, <laughs> what are you talking about? As a business, you, the, the way the endemic esports teams have been raising money and, you know, expanding it, every time you give away equity, you are sacrificing potentially huge sums of money down the line because these teams have gone... Cl Cloud9 was started for $10,000 and is now raising at hundreds of millions of dollars. And do you know, know why I mean? it's worth millions of dollars? Because they're at the World Championship where TSM will never be again. So let's get back to the World Championship. This is the <laughs> All right. Some of the inside presented by at and <laughs> without TSM. They're rubbish. So anyway, back to Worlds. Great. Okay. Right, the question I have, we alluded to it earlier, is let's talk about that, that crazy group C, the one with Fnatic, SK Telecom, RNG. What have you thought based on this group initially? Uh, it's mostly gone as expected for me. Um, I think the only weird part is I, I like the Garen Yumi that Fnatic's still running. Some oh, teams kind of were up in the air on it. It plays a little different than it did, whereas like the slow initially made it so like you could just chase them down. Now he's just like a walking artillery and he uses the tenacity to just make sure he can't get CC locked so he can just blind face check things. It plays really <laughs> I don't like how it plays. Mm -hmm. it's just, so imagine me coming back. I was telling the story to them earlier, Mark. Imagine me coming back to League of Legends, and I was doing, you know, catching up on all the champions mm -hmm. I missed, and looking like, hmm, untargetable. Oh, you can just build a death cap on your support. Yep. Oh, and you can poke for free at extremely long range. Put it this way. Guide the missile. Yeah. I was like, 
What am I looking at? And then you put it, you put it on a tank that can face check anything. Imagine for free. The show, if you know, we can do skits and stuff. We have all this production money. Imagine if we'd have done this joke <laughs> skit where it's a cold open and Monty's like discovering what the champion Yumi is. <laughs> at the end, if at the end you were like just trolling, it's not real. He'd be like, of course it is. Wouldn't be you know like it's actually ridiculous when you just describe the champion. Yeah, you think like, how can this exist? It reminds me of that Meteos clip from. That's back exactly what I was referencing to him. Yeah. yeah, I told him the unfortunate thing was that that wasn't even from that long before, and he basically described Yumi, didn't he? Yeah, he was talking. It's untargetable, like, yeah, exactly. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I wasn't really ever bought into the Fnatic hype. I think a lot of sure. people, and I don't think that they're not their bad team or anything, but people were, were positioning. They went to game five versus G2 exactly. twice. Yeah. Right. And that, the logic was they could be a winner of Worlds, right? That right. Was that was, that was, using, that's, yeah. that's what I mean, my overrated. Yes, like, I didn't exactly. think that they legitimately had a, a real no. shot at Worlds. Uh, whereas some people did. I think they're a good team. Sure. I think it sucks they ended up in this group. I think they could have gotten out of a lot of other groups. Group uh, B, course. Group D, yes. probably. Yes. Um, maybe even Group A. But but unfortunately, they're in Group C. And so I didn't have any hope for that reason because I, I didn't think that they were actually a title contender. It's still a little up in the air just because we're talking about this Garen Yumi. That's all we've seen them on. And maybe they'll be, look a little different when they're... Because it's, it's, it's been horrible in the early game. And then it's just super annoying in the mid to sure. late game. But doesn't actually do anything on its own but be annoying. Um, and it was enough to come back against Clutch, not against SKT. So I think I expected SKT to be one of the tournament favorites. RNG I was a little up in the air on, but historically, Uzi it's gets always better. made it out yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and so I, I had those two favored, and and it's still you know pretty it's much definitely up. still it's up. gone that way for between the Fnatic and RNG. It's definitely still up in the air. I mean, you look at yeah, those two teams. Play. Yeah. yeah. Well, what about SKT then? What's everyone's thoughts? Like, is SKT yeah. like are they the best? Yeah, yeah. How how good are they? Right. Maybe I overrid them a little bit. G2 better than SKT for me. Yes, I, I have G2 as, uh, they were. it was between SKT and G2 going in, I think so far G2 looks better. And FPX, but they dropped off. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, I assume we'll get there later. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think SKT looks really good. Their comp was not a team fight comp, the one that they were struggling with, and they tried to play it pretty poorly. Mm -hmm. But they picked up the win, and like I was saying, kind of with the, the whole Jensen didn't play well, but you still found that win. That's kind of how I felt about this one, where you're watching SKT do all these baffling decisions, and they still win. That should actually make you feel pretty confident that they'll get out of this group. I think there's this narrative that Faker, like the god is back. I hate that narrative, because Faker, when he was godly, when he was unkillable Demon King in Season 3, there was Faker, and then there was a chasm between him and every other mid laner. It's nowhere like that. I think he's still the most well-rounded. I think he's still most experienced and the most clutch mid laner. Who's Chaz M? Is he some guy who's like part of the staff? <laughs> <laughs> There's a giant gap between. Yes, and there you go. <laughs> um, but I, I think part of that too was just the way the game was at the time, because you could snowball in season three in 2013. You could snowball insanely hard in a way that you just out of the mid lane, like, remember when he could literally just one-shot supports on LeBlanc. He could buy two pink wards and put him down in his own, like, yeah. this is where I'm going to make a play. It <laughs> yeah. can stop him. <laughs> so I think, like, part of that is the game. The ga They definitely changed a lot of mechanics in the game because of Faker's dominance. Like, mm -hmm. he is one of those players that is a casualty of how developers can patch frequently because they can basically just punish super good players. Faker LeBlanc with Death Firegraph. Death yes. Firegraph got removed. Zari, really, yeah. like, all that stuff was, was gross. I still think he's he's the best mid laner in, in the tournament, but probably best player. He, is, but. he hit a good ex example, though. It's the way the narrative's framed, right? Like, the problem here sure, is, yeah. I don't even know how people can have the goal to say that line, like, Faker's back! Back, you never let him go away. You're always saying he's the best. So what's he back from, guys? You're the ones who said he was literally gone. back at Worlds. Exactly. Yeah, he was. He wasn't at Worlds last. Whereas the real narrative for me with Faker this year is that both times when it's the regular split, he never looks like the best player. Forget even best player in the world. He doesn't look like the best Korean mid laner in the yeah. splits. But each time he gets to the playoffs, he levels his game up. And as you see at Worlds again, he is back to looking amazing. He obviously had that ridiculous game on Tristana where he looked like he was the best player in the tournament again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just how he played it was so amazing. He kept going for like these half roams and then like would just put so much pressure on the map that no one felt like they could do anything and it's it's that's always kind of been how he's like his half roaming he's been doing for years and it's it's amazing which, which was looked, impressive because he was playing against a mid laner with teleport and with realm warp mm -hmm. from rise so you're talking about two mobility spells and he was still winning the realm war yeah i, I thought he looked tiny bit awkward with his ultimate usage the one in top lane where he could have had the kill and he and let the, the kill go in, in and then bottom. the one where he saved someone by yeah. ulting my thing is, Faker always had a corpse as a jungler, like Pina, <laughs> Bengi, Blank. He actually has an insane jungler now. I think Clid is the best jungler at the tournament. Not Yankos, not Tarzan. I think it, for me, it's Clid. So you yeah, have the whole narrative about Faker being this like 
god, like, like carrying SKT player is just dead for me. He has cleared, he has Teddy, he can't even look scared. He's also just more like what a normal, really good player should be. He's a mid laner, so he does a very good job in the mid lane, and then if you put him in team fights, he does a good job like that. A normal player plays that. It's just you're used to the old faker who was obviously just transcended the whole game, didn't he? Like, in, in the old teams, the whole reason my local sin to the, all these championship junglers are all corpses is because clearly they just did whatever Faker wanted and just went where he was. Whereas in this team, it looks a lot more like Clid's entirely self-directed and actually they kind of follow his, in his wake. Yeah, and it, it feels more like, I guess, 2015 one where for the most part, everyone's good on the team. The 2016, I think it was, where, you know, you had Wolf, you just uh, kind of a... Those were the end of the corpse. day, yeah, the last yeah. days. Yeah. yeah, so like, I think this is a ro ro uh, roster with effort and... And Teddy look really good as well. Khan, Khan was kind of a question mark, but he's been fine. So I think they, they look really, really solid. All and then time. also you add in, Teddy can play Kale. Yeah, not, there we go. not limited to All of a sudden, yeah, they're not only playing the Zayas of the world or whatever. So like that, that's actually a pretty significant thing to add in for SK Telecom because if they have that little wrinkle to their game, of course they can win this tournament. I, I want to talk about the SKT RNG game because there was some really... I think people were critical of their draft, but I actually, I enjoyed the composition that they had. The problem is I feel like they just didn't play it well until the very end of the game when they were using their mobility. Because remember, they had three teleports. They had on Ezreal, right? You have it on, you have two ports on Twisted Fate, and then you have it on your top lane Renekton, and they only had it on Mordekaiser. And for me, the issue is, if I look at RNG's draft, what they're trying to do is create picks with the Zoe and the Blitzcrank, right? And the way SKT was playing was it was like, there would be a hook that would come in, somebody would die, and then they would like react with TF port onto the, the where the play just happened and somebody would die. And so then they take like a 4v5 and lose instead of applying pressure across the map and playing cross map with all their TPs. So I want to touch on that. RNG comp, the biggest thing they want to do is create picks with Zoe and Blitzcrank. The caster said, SKT usually plays their Baron really slow, their first Baron. SKT is just terrible with their first Baron. Whenever they get their first Baron, they do this all the time in Korea, they'll spread out 1-3-1, they'll maximize farm, and they'll try to get outer turrets. And that's the last thing you want to do with Baron. Like, people have gotten so good at snowballing with Baron. Almost every team that gets Baron will get inhibitor, will get multiple turrets, but SKT likes spreading out and farm. And that is the worst thing to do versus a Zoe and a Blitzcrank. RNG were so happy when SKT spread out, gave them three lanes they could pick off of, so I thought it was god-awful uses. And speaking of, speaking a bit on the TF versus Renekton one, the checkmate TF play is when both people have teleport up, you send a split pusher Renekton to a side lane, and TF ports to that lane, and you kill a target, and both of you guys can TP yeah. anywhere on the map. Yes, that's the and, key point. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's what I'm saying, is like, they just misplayed it until the very end, and I think it was intelligent of them to finally realize, hey, we've got two Sheens, we have a Lich Bane, and we have the Ezreal with the Trinity Force. We're going to be able to knock down these towers way faster in a base race. Like, there's basically nothing that can stop that when you have that AP TF that's like at six items or whatever, right? So I think that this game was, was super interesting in that it took SKT so long to, to figure it out, but when they figured it out, they just won instantly. I, I can understand it too, just because like, there's so much threat when you're the other team groups up mid, like you're so scared that they're just gonna kill you uh, mm -hmm. with, with how many catch tools that they have. And so I can understand that sometimes you overreact when they start going in and you try and punish it, but it's just the wrong play. Like you should be more focused. <laughs> Dude, I just love it. I love like Ming's hook would come in, somebody would die and then Faker's like, I'm here now, diving <laughs> yeah, the turret yeah, like, like three seconds later. <laughs> I, I like understand, like you're like, ah, I'm, something's happening mid, let's go there. But you have to fight that and hope that you can absorb the pressure mid and do, do other things. I just, I just think like you just, you can't react to the faster picks. Yeah. But the, like the weird thing about this composition, which was this game, which was interesting, was it was sort of like, what well, you're talking about Loco, it was sort of like, SKT could pull off these cross map picks, but then the local, but they it was slower. Whereas the comp from RNG pulls off cl like close range picks, but they're much faster. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like SKT was playing into RNG's hands for most of the game. And if they had just executed their win condition earlier, they would have just smashed them. So it was kind of needlessly close. So SKT was bad in execution of their comp, and RNG's top laner was just so god-awful. Oh my <laughs> god. I don't think I've seen a worse Mordekaiser. Like, there's so many things you can do as Mordekaiser versus TS. Did you watch Fun Plus? <laughs> <laughs> that one wasn't as bad as this one. Like, literally, the jungler's walking up to try to smite Dragon. You want to ult him immediately to make sure they can't get the Inferno Drake. This guy waited. He used E first before using ult. He ulted Clid after Clid is able to get the steal. Like, there's just so many things he did wrong. Like, when you're in a 1v2 situation as a Mordekaiser, ult the target immediately before you start taking damage. He's not doing any of that. I just... It, 
baffles me that this is a pro player playing in one of the hardest leagues and he can play Mordekaiser at this level. Speaking of baffling things, we haven't talked about Group A yet, which obviously has Cloud9 in. Now, I have a question for you. Let's just start this off. Oh boy. And I was, I was going to make it neutral and ask what people thought first, but I'm going to be biased. Right? I, I actually personally didn't pick Cloud9 to get out of this group. I have G2 and Griffin. But I am, my, I am absolutely baffled by Cloud9's choice to play Blabber instead of Sven here. Remember, this is a player who was the MVP. And by the way, I didn't hear anyone arguing against that MVP. Maybe someone thought someone else should win it, but he was clearly like one of the best players in the again. entire yeah. LCS. The Blabber guy, remember, only played four games during the regular space. It's not even like he was in the rotation for playoffs. It's not like he was a true, like, like the example you said before, like Bengi and Blank. It wasn't like they were rotating someone in and out. He basically only played the for funsies games during the split. And then they start him at Worlds here in, like, in theory, an important game. Reaper 200 IQ? I don't know. Sometimes Reaper gets too smart for himself. Like, he's clearly a smart guy, yes. but <laughs> this is one where, like, the only logic I can see, because some people are saying, oh, maybe they're looking for a specific thing in draft, and maybe it just didn't show up, but this was a pretty standard draft, and I know... So Scarrow would have played this draft amazing. He, yeah, he can play at least just fine, and Blabber had a fine game, so I don't want to, like, be like... No, oh. no, he wasn't the main reason they lost. Yeah, but, but just the overall yes, decision exactly. is, is curious, and the only thing I can think is that Blabber's, like, more of a coin flip player, and so you're just hoping that you somehow get a really scrappy game out of G2, kind of like this, but he like super pops off. Do you really want a scrappy game versus G2? Because I feel like they just mechanically outplay you. And do you want a standard I, well, game versus I think, G2? I think you, As Cloud9? Yeah, I think you do want a scrappy game. Looking at like the games in, in the series that Fnatic played, a lot of the times that Fnatic won, it was pretty early on with some devastating, backbreaking like 3v1 plays in the bot lane or something that gave Fnatic a lead, and Fnatic was... In, in the EU LCS, very good in the early game and would run away with it. So I think maybe they were trying to emulate that idea and their balling just got blown up. I, I don't know. One thing that gets overlooked by G2, or overlooked about G2, is they're actually an incredibly strong standard team. It's yeah. not like they can yeah. only play carries. It's not like they can only do personal Just look at that major. game against Griffin. They have so much depth. Yeah, the game they against Griffin. They looked so too. disciplined, it was amazing. It was, yeah, it was Warren, Oriana, they're playing standard, like 2014, 2015, just full-on team fight comps, and they're doing it correctly. So. It's really hard to get at G2. Can you play them? Can you match them in terms of like scrappy mechanical heavy game? That's hard. Can you beat them in macro like team fight kind of game? That's also really hard. Yeah, I mean, I think they were going to lose either way, mm -hmm. but I still would have liked to have seen their best foot forward before going for the mix sure. up. Like, I'm fine, like, you lose game the first time you play pretty handily, and then. I don't know, maybe maybe the, the second game, you're like, all right, Blabber, get out there and try something. On the G2 yeah. side of things, though, like, especially the game they had against Griffin that I alluded to before. So was, good. Was, like, basically, like, if you'd have taken the nameplates off and asked someone, which is the Korean team, you'd think that was SK Telecom. They were playing amazingly. Yes. Like, they had the whole game in their grasp the entire time. Like, if I'm Griffin, I'm insanely demoralized playing... Now I find out G2 can do that. I, I, I mean, thought they were going to wreck me in the early game, you know. I said this earlier this year coming in because, you know, I wasn't watching a lot of League of Legends earlier during the Overwatch League season. But when I saw the European finals in spring, I was I literally just sat there and I was like, this is the best Western team I have ever seen. Like, this is a really good team uh, because they were so clean. I was very confident in their, you know, their abilities to win MSI. And we're still seeing that here. Like, they are just incredible. Yeah, and that, that MSI group stage, they've had one game versus... SKT where it was, it was it was a crazy game yes. and everyone wrote it off because it yeah. was crazy and then the next time they played they just ran it down their throats with the most standard oppressive controlling game plan ever and that's when it was kind of like okay yeah they can play both styles so you can't just assume that oh yeah we'll pick a scaling comp versus them or something and they'll they'll run out of juice or something whichever so, way the meta lands G2 will be well suited yeah. are they the best team in the tournament then? easily I think so I, I agree I mean from what we've seen so far but again I, from SK Telecom, they've been surprisingly very kill heavy in the in this tournament so far. Like if we go back to the Korean playoffs, we weren't seeing like that kill a minute stuff, and it's happening a lot with SKT right now. So something tells me that SKT is going to settle down and like have a little bit of a cleaner, more controlled style to play the longer the tournament goes on. Uh, also, a very hard group to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, G two obviously starting super strong though, and and looking very dominant. What about on the other side though? Because obviously in that group, people are mainly looking. Everyone thought G2, number one. I don't think I, don't think I saw anyone else pick anyone's number one. And then the, the choice comes down to Griffin, Cloud9. So what are your thoughts on that at the moment? I actually had Cloud9. Um, oh. This game, even though they got absolutely booty blasted, it, they had good moments. Like, Licorice looks really good so far. Got the solo okay, kill okay. on the top. Yeah. And, I mean, they had a big lead on top before they threw it away. Right. Sneaky looked terrible, but that was also like the Cassio. I don't... 
Do you think I he would look it. better on traditional AD carry versus? Yeah, perks? the same way I don't really like Reckless being reduced to like a moving turret for mm -hmm. his Yumi. I don't really like Sneaky on on this. Like I think he can play mages. We've seen him do it before a little bit, but I don't think that's his strength. The same way I don't. Yeah, What's his yeah. strength? Standard AD carry, uh, front to back team fighting for the most part. Like I think that's where he's always shined. And that's how I feel about Reckless, too. And yes, they can play the Karmas, and Sneaky played Swain for a little bit, and you can play Garen, but like that's not what you're best at, in my opinion. So I, I still have a little bit of hope for Cloud9 because I see positives, and I don't think that this was their best. What about forward. the question here? How worried are you about them? I'm worried, but not quite like Doomsday. Oh. When you have to throw stuff at a wall and see what sticks, and I think that's what Cloud9 did versus yeah. G2, yeah, for sure. you're in a bad spot. Just the roster thing to me immediately starts me off on the wrong foot, you know, like what's going on already? Yeah, there's, there's definitely a question about like, is this motivated by anything behind the scenes? I'm hoping it's just Reaper trying to be 200 IQ and, and like it's not a, a bigger thing, but if they had gone out there and gotten slammed with Sven and like traditional marksmen, like maybe I'd be a little bit more concerned, but this was clearly an attempt at something and it, it didn't work. Yeah, but so they, almost no, lost, they almost lost a Hong Kong it attitude. Did. The that... 200 IQ draft did work because what he did is even though he lost the game, Reaper tricked Mark and other people into thinking it's fine because he wouldn't really do that in an I, important yeah. game. He's, he's <laughs> doing 200 that because this guy is. Yeah, versus he's a genius. He's a genius. I, I, I don't know. Like, I look you're, at that... you're drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> I'm drinking Kool-Aid for I, sure. I, I, I look at that... We're on Cloud my show, aren't we? I look at that Hong Kong attitude game, and it gives me all the information I need to know about this team. They had a, such a solid lead early, and then they just a ram and then try and kill this Garen over and over. Like you're not going to kill the Garen. You, he's just going to get chunked out and then get all his HP back while they're trying to force this Baron. And then what? They take that crazy 50-50 Baron. I watched Baron. SKT struggle against the Garen Yumi. I'm not holding it that much against Cloud9. That was Fnatic playing it incredibly well. This Garen Yumi was He was literally not just standing by Baron Pit. Fnatic. And That's great. That's all you need to do. You just stand there. You face check. You press W when you get CC. Oh, no. Like, I, I think the whole, the, this whole game was so wacky because they couldn't play to their win conditions at all. Right, like they're sitting there. Let's, I'm, I'm pulling up right now, um, but as we were looking at this game, like you can't just sit there at the Baron and think that you're going to be able to poke this Garen out. Like it, they were lucky to get that Baron. It was killed by what a Heimerdinger turret in the end. Yep. Uh, in a true 50-50 after they got <laughs> bored. Tristana didn't do anything. After they, to fight, after they just got, oh yes, around. that's right. Mission was just <laughs> wandering around the outside of the pit, not firing with like a four-item Tristana. They had a great early game. Like, they should they have had, lost had, that game. They had a good early game versus, versus G2. I like the early games. <laughs> it's the best of one situation. They can, they can have a good Look, early game. I just, say, I just say they had a great early game, and this is a this is a must-win game in this group. And they, they came in, and they get that lead, and then they completely blow it by failing to put actual pressure on the map and just playing poke the, poke the Invincible Garen forever. I think Yumi did something like 60,000 champion damage in that yeah. game or something because they will just lose the poke every time because Garen will heal and Yumi will just blast you. So, okay, there's another team in this group to talk about, <laughs> which is obviously Griffin from Korea. <laughs> now, to be fair, a team that came in with quite a lot of criticism, you know, I actually think if you look where they are in their region, one of the most criticized Korean teams we've probably ever had coming into a tournament like this. So if you look at the moment, certainly hasn't started amazingly against G2. G2 kind of controlled them, won that game. We're always ahead pretty much. What do you think of Griffin? Because I've got to say, similar, similar little rant. What was Griffin doing with their lineup? Griffin just played a whole <laughs> split with Doran as the, the new top laner they had, showing off the ability to have a carry top laner, to play through all the lanes. Basically, all the old criticisms getting taken away, and then they come to Worlds, and they themselves just pull one out where you haven't seen this guy since like the beginning of the summer split. So what, what do you think of Griffin? I, I Yeah, the, the sword thing just baffled me, and then <laughs> watching him play was terrible. He, he had a really bad game, so... You're gonna blame that on Sword? No, I'm not blaming the game on Sword, but I'm, I he just... He didn't play well, did he? <laughs> yeah, like, what, what did he do? He, he, like, they took mid turret and he ulted on Raptors and sat there as they ran away. It was just like... Loco, he, he literally only used the ult for the sound effect. Like, he, was, he that has sick, Spear of Soji, you have to... Not, that's me. You have to go in and ult and then use autos. You can't ult outside the fight and charge your Fury, then go... You're not like Burst Renekton. You, mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. 
I'll, I'll explain what happened in this game a little bit. So oh, both, thank you. Th thanks for getting close. I, I didn't actually watch it, so thank God. <laughs> right, after that, maybe we'll try a bit of analysis, guys. Man, I'm like, go on, then. Explain, please, local, prior to local, what happened in this game. <laughs> I'm in a very lucky position where I speak Korean. CV Max has been extremely vocal because he's also co-streaming what's happening. And also, right. Grabs will come onto my stream and then he'll talk about little things going on. So they banned Quinn in the game and first picked Renekton. So the kind of the conclusion both G2 and Griffin is arriving at is Renekton plus Elise or Renekton plus Talia is able to burst down anything in top lane and it's an incredibly strong duo. So that's why Renekton's getting first pick and Quinn's getting banned. So the one counter they think can happen is Quinn running cleanse can beat Renekton Talia and Renekton Elise. So that's why Quinn's banned out. And their game plan was we're going to invade initially on top side of the map and place down our wards so we know if they're starting red or not. And then we're gonna late invade again with our trio, with our trinket, and we're gonna be able to kill pretty much whoever's there. So they did that, but one caveat was G2 was able to sneak a ward on chickens with Oriana, so they saw him go race and chickens. So Oriana was able to go and kind of mess with Talia doing chickens. And then when she got to double golems, Renekton's able to stack three waves, and Tilly is able to get three camps, hit level three, and dive the top lane and get the kill almost no matter what. But Tarzan missed his smite by like 10 HP, and Wonder was able to steal away the large double golem. So Tilly is not able to get level three, they're not able to dive. Wonder, the wave doesn't crash properly. Yanko finishes bot side of the camp, and he's able to come top side mm. and kill him. So their early game plan was really well planned out, but two little things went wrong. Uh, the ward missing and not getting the last hit on double golem with smite, so all their early game plan blew up. And, and that's and, why the game looked really weird. And also, like it has to be said, G two has like an insane scaling comp with Orin, Oriana, and uh, and the Kaisa in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean Yank Yanko's had a great game beyond that too. He basically kept Tarzan down for most of the rest of the game. Tarzan still found a killer. Tarzan too. overrated. <laughs> Maybe I mean, like you just said, that was a really unfortunate thing that happened. And he still was three and zero at one point in the game, and had some nice pickoffs using his wall and stuff. So I thought he, yeah, he he kind of got had an unlucky game, <laughs> uh, but I, I didn't feel like Tarzan was the problem. Their bot lane got taken <coughs> advantage of pretty heavily. I like, hate Lucian. Please don't wear Lucian. Lucian is like what zero and three, and every time we see it, just why do people bully. pick Lucian? I don't know. If you don't get Ezreal, Kai'Sa, or Zaya, I think you shouldn't play AD I, carry. I think they want it because it has enough laning presence to not need babysitting. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going for a topside kind of focus like this, it can work. So you go even with Kai'Sa, what happens in mid-game? Well, you're supposed to already have Snowball top, I think. Mm. And so you're, I, that, that's what I'm guessing. Is, is the, it's just there for some early game stability in the bot lane if you're not going to give it any attention. But then Yanko still made plays happen bot lane, then covered top, tracked him, nothing happened. And then, yeah, you're just getting outscaled. So I'm not too, too negative on, on Griffin. But I still... See you still have C9 getting out yeah, of the group. Yeah, yeah. I'm not too negative, but they're not going out of group. You have to pick one, Mark. Well, like, the question is this. How about this? What if in the future games, Griffin just keeps running sword? Oh, I don't know. It's got to be a possibility, right? I mean, the start of the tournament like that. It'd be one thing, like a normal Korean approach would be, you know, you'd play game one with the normal team, and then if that fails, maybe then you bring in a sob as like, you know, to cover for that guy or whatever. If you start the tournament, in theory, you thought that was a good lineup. You thought that was going to win. Yeah, I mean, maybe they go back to sword. Uh, Doran looked pretty good. I thought he looked like a stud, yeah. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't think they would, but who knows? I mean, IG used Duke for, for a game in a best of five. So. What tilted me the most is their addition of Doran reminds me of like the classic change when uh, KT before Worlds last year brought in Yukao, where all you did is take out the player that was the most criticized, take someone who doesn't have any of the weaknesses, and now give yourself more variety. So in the same sense, to me, it was a slam dunk to have the Doran guy playing and just have... I would keep Sword as the reserve if Doran, because he's a rookie, just fails completely, you know? Like, first two games are terrible. Yeah, you bring the rookie, the vet in, then say, right, just stabilize things, please. But the idea that you were doing these drafts, like, I mean, this is ridiculous. Look, why are we picking, like, carry champions for the guy who isn't the carry player? Remember, the way, for anyone who didn't watch the earlier part of the year, Sword literally made his name on being the guy who you just put on Scion and say the rest of the team will do all the damage. You just play Scion and don't die. Jace know? was one of his carries that he played, but speaking on this draft, Jace, Lee, Ezreal, Irelia, Nautilus, so CB Max was also talking about this draft um, on his stream. The rationale just killed me. So he's saying, okay, we don't have any kind of engage in this draft. Our engage will be Chobi will stand in front and poke everyone and then they're going to have to engage on Chobi, and that's going to be the engage. Like, this is a game plan we do quite often. I'm like, 
Are you serious? Like, that level of execution is expected from that's your like mid That's like the laner. police chief using his own son as the bait to get, like, the psychopath out, like, that's your own son, dude, what are you doing? It's, Why is that the plan? It's like 2015 <laughs> SKT when they would just play trip, they would play all... All priority, comps, no all CC. All priority, yeah. no CC comps. It's like, people stop doing that for a reason. Well, it, it's one of those things where you can do it, it just it, requires so perfect. The degree of execution yeah. is way too high. Like, <laughs> I mean, he did play amazing. His CS number were crazy. Like he never got caught out. But still, like, why is that the ex expectation I mean, you're putting onto your players? That draft probably only works versus HK. Uh, I'm, maybe it would work versus versus C9. But I would be concerned that like top lane wouldn't. I mean, you're not. Licorice isn't going to pick Sion. He's picking a scrappier matchup. And then if if your Jace falls behind, which. No, I'm thinking of the wrong game. Jace fell behind in a different game. But uh, I could absolutely believe that most of the teams in this group are gonna like not troll, but like wait, not give away much. Wait, this was the game where Jace fell behind, isn't it? Which one is it? The one Jace, versus Scion. What, what, one the game for game Jace versus Scion. Yeah, the Scion came back to lane. He had a a dagger because he. Oh yeah, it is this one. It, it is this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah right. the Jace was actually pretty useless in laning phase, if I remember. It was. It wasn't until later in the game. And Chovy. I was mostly Ezreal doing Ezreal yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Chovy hard carry mid. Yeah. Like in a group like this, where all three of you, if you're Cloud Nine, obviously Griffin or G Two, you're all thinking it's just the other two. I could absolutely see teams not trying to reveal everything in the draft against HK. Yeah, yeah that's how you lose a game. Yeah, but until they can prove they can beat you, you're gonna try to think like that's. Well, what they did. They did prove that they're capable of beating C Nine. Three kills. <laughs> at, at, you know, level one. They level yeah. one. Yeah. Cloud9 did everything wrong, they still yeah. couldn't win. Yeah, they, <laughs> they exactly. proved they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Three, yeah. three yeah. kills yeah. with Sion. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Ezreal burn flash. And Ezreal yeah. burn yeah. flash. Sure. And a minute later, Ezreal gets like, what was it, a double kill for mid? Or maybe just one kill? Is, yeah. I don't know. I, I have no faith in HK. They're obviously massive man's, fans of uh, Sneaky's Patreon. Or <laughs> 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 They're all in the $100 tier. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <Jeez. laughs> Okay, so we didn't address it then. You, you, you hinted at it earlier. Group B was supposed to be the least interesting group in the whole tournament. The FPX won and Splice, because it was just supposed to be, well, obviously FPX wins it, Splice comes second, and, you know, J-Team and Gam can decide between each other who comes third and fourth. That already looks like that's off the table. Like, at the moment, listen, it's not as crazy as, like, anyone could come first, but FPX obviously looks really shaky after that one. Who knows where J- Like, J-Team was supposed... So a lot of people were telling me J-Team was going to be the worst team in the group. Aren't, aren't they? You d they look pretty decent. They beat FPX really? for a reason. Yeah, they beat FPX because FPX played terrible. They're ju they're they're eight. I was. I have stuff. to say, my mind was blown that FPX was losing team fights against them. Like, they lost. Be where they yeah, we, talk, we talked about. This they game played without an AD carry. Uh, yeah. They they played an AD carry only damage comp without an AD carry. That's that's a problem. Right, and like. <laughs> If you watch that game and like what good plays did HKA make, it's like, or excuse me, not HKA, uh, JT make, it was close to zero. Yeah. It was actually just FPX throwing. And then you, they're, they're super, super passive. They're super lane oriented. They don't move around the map and their team fighting is fine, but you, you're kind of relying on the other team picking bad engages. And then they, they play against Gam. They were basically doing an impression of like Golden Guardians where the other team has to just int into you and you just kill them if they right, do. Like you didn't make any of that happen. Like, right, and, you didn't and, choose for that guy to do that. And they, they, they play Gam and and they lose just because Gam pressed R on Nocturne enough times so they eventually killed them because <laughs> J-Team doesn't do anything. I actually do still think J-Team's the worst team in the group. They, Are they the worst team in the tournament? I, no, I think... That's it, probably going too far. I'd say, I'd say HKA probably is still. <laughs> but, I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong on J-Team, but, like, I, I really don't believe in LMS teams in general uh, after the last couple of years. And people well, the you know, LMS teams don't does apparently. The circuit, exactly. some people, some That's people. why they're getting rid of it. Let's flip it then. <laughs> Let's talk about the more interesting side of it then. Which no is one believes in LMS. The, the much more interesting side is the FPX side because as, as I've said, like this is supposed to be an easy group on the surface and some people I know, like so I noticed like Kelsey, for example, she wasn't high on them as like a potential favorite, but I know like LS, for example, who people think is biased to Koreans, he actually gave it up to FPX and they could be a champion of the tournament. So after the after the limited group sample size so far, what do you make of them at Worlds? I thought that they were going to be a lot better. I was I was more in the LS camp than the the Kelsey camp, and I've been very disappointed. Um, part of it is like they've always had their own meta, so it's kind of hard to criticize their picks because sure. it's like this is what I expect. Oh, I will criticize their picks. Well, so that's what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> I want to. I want to be like this is garbage, but like that's what they did in China. So it's. It's hard for me to say that this is all wrong, but they, they clearly have their own priorities on things. They play their own style, and right now it looks really bad that they can't even execute their own style against a team like J-Team, who, who's just sitting there and being like, engage on us. It was really just one player's fault, though, let's be real. No, yeah. no, no. I but, actually but don't think it was. Gim Gimgoon had some mm -hmm. curious alts where he would just like, 
I forget who, there's one in the mid lane where he just ulted someone who ran away and he did nothing the whole fight. Doinby had some okay engages, but he also like just biffed a couple right into a wall. Like I, I didn't think anyone played that well. So the core engine of FPX is Doinby and Tian having really strong mid jungle 2v2 yep. and getting the team going and diving bot side or diving top side. Sion and Elise don't really have that great synergy together if Sion can't get out of lane. And Sion versus Akali isn't that free of a lane. Akali can actually hold her own in terms of clearing creeps. She's not easy to hit with any of Sion's spells. And Sion and Elise can't really 2v2 together. They don't set up for each other. I think that duo <coughs> is actually super problematic for their draft. Yeah, and compared to their game today, they actually looked good uh, for the most part. I mean, I think Splice put up a better fight than I, I thought they would. Um, but... That just speaks to me. I, I had Splice a second in that group, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and they they looked better than I thought. And at the same time, Tian looked a lot better today. And I thought Doinby looked a lot better today using his Dark Technology Rise that mm -hmm. everyone was hyping Oh, up. by the way, since I referenced it earlier, that, you know, if you're SK Telecom, if you're Team Liquid, you're loving the meta that's emerging. Another team, obviously, Splice. It's like their wet dream of a meta. <laughs> you don't Is do it? anything for the first 30 minutes. <laughs> I can't make my mind up on Splice because they've looked, this entire tournament, even playing stage, horrible at, like, Winning the game. Oh, they were terrible in this game here. Yeah, this they, is appalling. They, they, I mean, even in their their plans versus UOL, they they threw some games. Put it this way: all the people in Splice, all the players, all the coaches, think me and Veteran have constructed this conspiracy theory that they're bad in the mid game. It's an inside job. You're doing it. <laughs> I'm not making you do that. <laughs> and they have to admit they're. But Mr. So President, the call's the coming game. from inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on right here? That was atrocious. All you need to know is during that particular game against Gam, I saw they did like a shot reaction of the people who were inside, like the splice camp, you know? Yeah. And even they were just like, what have we been doing all year? What have we been doing? Like, all right, Even their right. investors don't believe in splice. Uh, I have a question about this game too, because there was, there was a part of this that really confused me. Uh, so I'm deferring to you two, mm -hmm. three, honestly, more experts at league than, than I am. What's the Kha'Zix supposed to do here? Oh, the, in the splice versus gam one? Yes. That is just, they're, oh, so in the splice versus gam game from day one, the GAM coach said he thinks Levi is the best player in the world, and it actually makes perfect sense, because if you have Kali... <laughs> no, no, it, no, no. It makes, it makes, it makes That's perfect sense. That's what local says, okay, go on. It makes perfect sense. If you have Akali, Tristana, Syndra, Pike, yeah. and then you have last pick, and instead of picking an engaged champion, instead of picking a tanky champion, instead of picking a champion with CC, you give that player Kha'Zix, he must be the best player in the world. That is the only explanation, <laughs> right? No, that is the only explanation. If you think your team doesn't need any tankiness, any kind of engage, any kind of CC, you Here's need to put him on a local. carry. He is the best player in the world. I'll give you some live like, editorialization. Like, one, that was pretty good, actually. Like The actual joke, but the problem is you didn't set it up like a punchline. If you'd have landed that properly, it was a pretty good joke, actually, at the end, wasn't it? But the problem is you made it sound like real analysis. So at the end, people are just like, so is he the best player in the world? <laughs> no, he's making the joke he's making is like, why else would you pick that jungle? Exactly. It, it is yeah. crazy. You're calling should be a tank jungle. Akali, right? yeah. Kha'Zix, exactly. Tristana, Syndra, Pike. Sure. You literally pick five carries. <laughs> this is solo queue. This is a solo queue draft where the first guy is, please pick tank. The second guy is, oh, I can't, please pick tank. The third guy is, no, you pick tank, and no one ever picks tank. The good thing is though, you know when you know sometimes in life. One of the reasons why it can be a dilemma when you have a choice put in front of you is you'll always wonder, what if I'd have taken the, the option I didn't take, though? Luckily, you never have to wonder again. What if that Levi guy just left Gam and he went to different regions and he tried to show us all that really aggressive jungle? LCS, he'd be brilliant in the LCS, wouldn't he? Well, we've seen all that now. He's done a whole world tour <laughs> where he was like, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? He was in all these regions, but never on any teams. And now he's back in Gam, like fair play. He just came, like prodigal son has returned in the end with all his wealth and debauchery, his riches, I mean, his time in NA. Good decision for him. I mean, he, I'm, he I'm, left, pretty, I'm pretty sure that's changed. not how the parable no, 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 of the prodigal no, no. son actually yeah. ends. But he spent uh, all his money something. Like, I'm pretty sure it doesn't end with like the prodigal son coming back with a bunch of money and No, no, and he women. spent all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah in, in fact, it's, uh, it comes back with nothing. Then he's running gas. They're like, happy to have you. Welcome aboard, son. Come on in. We haven't got anything either. Yeah, maybe it's a met <laughs> metaphorical <laughs> success because uh, he didn't find any overseas and now it's now it's back. He's at Worlds again. I don't know. Either way, I Gam Gam is, is relatively similar to what we we last saw from Levi. Where they're, they're hyper aggressive for the most part. They want. They're a fun team to watch. They're a fun team to watch, and I think uh, they'll be able to make enough plays against 
passive teams, and I'm a little bit concerned for Splice if Gam, <laughs> Gam runs oh. a, a reasonable comp versus them, and mm -hmm. Splice has their problems. That Just they imagine they had Jarvan right there. Oh my god, how do you draft Kha'Zix in that situation? I can also imagine them losing with Jarvan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have a better chance. I don't need to they have a better hard. chance. They have a better chance for sure. So. How dare you say that about <laughs> oh. I'm not Levi, the best player in the world. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, just, I'm just like splicing. Splice and Gam are kind of like this for me, where uh, they might go to tiebreakers in the second week if mm -hmm. if Splice loses to them. But I think Splice will beat J Team, and then I, they should beat uh, Gam again and lose to FB. All I'm gonna say is this: if Gam versus Splice goes to tiebreakers, the only loser is the fans. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to see that game. Well, actually, we might lose that bet. <laughs> oh, that, that was no, 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 no. I, listen, no, listen, are you ready? This is real. Okay. Without even being prompted, before we even told him we were going to do crazy bets, Loco for this group picked Gam to get out second over Splice. That's not too crazy. He had never what do you seen. Mean that's not too crazy. He never watched any oh, Gam game. Then, so then I asked him, as you'd expect, Mark. I said, "Oh, you watched a lot of Gam or something? You know, maybe he's got some secret inside." Right. And he goes, "No, I just really don't believe in Splice." I'm like, "But why would that make Gam beat them?" He's like. No, because you know one's really bad. You know, literally, literally, any team could be better than Splice. Was was they made worlds, so they can't be that bad. And Splice was terrible. That was terrible. his logic. He said they, they made worlds from what? the VCS, by the way. Yeah. they made worlds. How could they be that bad? It's like I think we could, if we were friends with him, we could get in with so many bets, couldn't we? Use like Flash. It's a different like team. I I still don't believe in Splice. I I will never believe in that team. You only ten, you only think. So just team. so we're clear, this is local logic, right? Could be a new segment for the show. <laughs> Maybe presented by like tutors for your kids if they don't know what the hell they're talking about. What's right? that like a, Look, the, the brain exactly. by program? Yeah. Yeah. So local's logic goes like this. Gam, they must be pretty good. They made worlds. That means they'll beat Splice. Didn't Splice also make worlds? No, but I don't. Th I think they're bad though. <laughs> <laughs> they're, okay, no, wait, wait, no, no, that is not my logic. I would wait, 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 wait. No, 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 to the power of 1067. No. There, okay, there, there's like a bar to make worlds, and then like Gam like was number one in their region. They made worlds by like a good margin. Like Splice, who's the third best team in, there. Who's the third best team in Gam's region? Who's the third best team? Uh, Loki. Is it really? No, Loki second. second. Yes. Okay, I actually have no idea who they're talking about. There we go, right? That's the end of that segment. So, exactly. Well, you just fair, wait. You just <laughs> wait until Gam beats Splice. To be fair, the obvious name for the segment as well would be Loco's Leap of Logic. Oh. Classic throwback, yep. but also referring to his terrible logic skills and analytical ability. But, oh, here's the sad thing. Once he gets outside of regions he doesn't watch, he actually has some analytical skills. So, anyway, I think we should wrap up this segment now, Mark. Do you have any, what final topic should we do? I've got one for you. Cross. Similar question I asked actually Dom, so I've got one for you here. Okay. Is like, everyone's been raving obviously about the top 20 players and the big names and all the rest oh. of it. Do you kind of have like a sleeper, someone you don't think you've, people haven't mentioned this player or this team enough and like, there's someone you actually think is kind of undervalued? Um, I, I'm trying to remember everyone's list. There, there were a couple, I, I'm a negative person, so of course I look way more like, who's overrated <laughs> right, in my yeah. mind than who's underrated? I'll tell you if they were on the list. Uh, <laughs> I, I would one? say I have a hard time believing that North America has no players That's pretty ridiculous, in, in the top 20. Like, yeah, that was wow. I know we're not good. I'm sure. not saying we are, but like, Core JJ is a world champion. Exactly. He's he's incredible. Yes. Like Impact. Impact actually has Imp shown up. Sure, Impact's really good. Like The fact that Core JJ even has the world from a couple of years ago, by the metric of I saw half these, this Uzi Eye and Fake at the top of the list, Core JJ should be on there just for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a hard time believing that there's no one. So, I, I mean, you can take your pick for who you think is, is the best. I probably would, would put Core JJ for it. Um, I also live living in a world, by the way, where on the one hand, everyone tells me stuff like, stop overrating those Griffin players. They haven't even been to Worlds yet. Nemesis, he's a top 10 player at Worlds. Like, Core has been to Worlds. He's won a Worlds. <laughs> Nemesis was watching on the last one going... Hope I get out of national leagues or something. Like, well, what's this logic? The thing is, how can TL be competitive in a group with like IG and Dom One, where you everyone has like Showmaker, Noguri, um, Rookie, Shy, all the way up there, so they don't have any kind of top, any player that's deserving of a top 20 list, and they can compete with these. Well, the logic, too, is that they just placed second at the last major international tournament, and it's not like they didn't dominate NA and win the finals again. What, they won four finals? Like, what do they have to do to get a player in this top 20? Exactly, and, like, if, if they're competitive against all these teams with top 20 players, you're basically saying, well, they must have godlike yeah, synergy. Exactly. Yeah, that's and the only conclusion. Do not. And like, they're you, pretty good synergy, they're you know, good, yeah. But they're not like... Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's how I feel a little bit about G2 in the same regard, where I actually think they're a team with godlike synergy. Yes. as well as godlike players and yes. that's that's why they look so good but like 
some of these other teams, you, like I don't, I don't think like unless you're saying nuclear is like literally trash cans here, and that, and that's why <laughs> Team Liquid was able to find a victory versus you know this, these teams with top twenty players. It's it's just one of those things I I, I can't really buy. It's just a history of the regions. Like it's so hard to but get it's, credit it's, to any. It's the history of the regions, and it's it's a lack of I think consensus on who the best player on the on these good teams are. Yes, is it Showmaker? Is it Naguri? Is it Canyon? And then you're kind of like, well, it's both because we don't want to just pick one or something. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, a person making, like, you should say, like, I think damn one, obviously everyone's good and it's a team game, yada, 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 but the standout player is this guy. Yes. And, and most people are going to have a standout player. Or most teams should have a standout player. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's telling that we're going to see, you know, if Liquid makes it out of groups, then we're going to have, what, 40 players left in this tournament, 40 starters, right? In the quarterfinals, we have eight teams of five players. So saying that they can't, none of their players are even in the top half of that if they make, make it out of the group is kind of crazy. Yeah, and to be fair, it's not like, it wasn't like a super snub where Core JJ's name wasn't coming up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think true. he was like, on a yes gen yeah. list, he was on a Reddit oh, yeah. list. Mm-hmm. Um, so it wasn't like that, but it was just like I was. Um, you just gave the two worst list, though. EFP. <laughs> well, that's why it was. That's why it's kind of funny to me. <laughs> uh, I did like Vettius's. I think the person of all the lists I saw, the one I, I agree with the most was probably Vettius's because I'm a I'm a big Perks fanboy. Yeah, me too. I had Perks at my number one. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, calm down. <laughs> it's not. You wouldn't even pick him as number one on G two, you moron. <laughs> what? How could so Perks is the best player on G two? An opinion you've never said ever yeah, in your so, entire life, yeah. including <laughs> 80 episodes of Listen Local during this exact I, I year, flip, I chronicling flip. this year. So he isn't even top, is he the best player on G2? I flip flop between him and you. You flip flop a lot between a lot of opinions, but <laughs> no, on whatever. Things happen, with things happen, happen in the game, when, things when happen what? in the tournament. Two best of ones made him the best player of the whole team now. Is that real? <laughs> it's very close between Perks and Yanko. <laughs> is there a script right here trying to make this guy write annoying stuff? Is this real? Is this actually well, real? I actually, I actually like. Kind of like when you're talking about who's the best player on a team, you know, like performance is one thing, but if you're taking one player from I'll that team, I'll drink some of the stars. <laughs> fantasy draft, one player from G2, your first, your first pick. Who do you take? There's no way he's taking Perks. No way. So Perks has a lot of intangibles, so I can, I want to rate him. The you ready? Tw- <laughs> what? What? Go on, I'm waiting. What? Go on. Go on. I, I want to rate him my number one in the top 20 list because right. I took mental, I took clutchness, I took intangibles. But if I'm like drafting, then that's different because like it's not taking in those intangibles. Why? Well, if he's the best. I can't handle it. If he's the best player in the world, why <laughs> yeah. would you not take him with your draft pick? What? I would take Faker. You would take Faker number one? Yeah. Wait a minute, did you, did you dare say you take Faker? I would take Perks, sir. Faker? Right. Who is this Faker you speak of? I would take Perks after the last two beer ones. Yeah, but to be fair, I did ask him. Faker, you say. I did ask him G2. The outrage in his voice. Who is I, I, this I guy? did ask him G2. How dare you? How I dare you? I actually you ridiculous think, human being. I don't think Perks is that ridiculous as, as, as a pick for, from G2. For number one, though, come on. For your first pick out of, G, out of G2, I don't think it's that bad. He, he, he's won titles. Here's my problem. He's won titles on his own. Oh, all the intangibles part. are great, but here's my problem. As number one, remember, you can have Caps, you can have Yanko. In fact, pretty, basically anyone else is already a god at their position, right? I would probably take, I, I would you know probably I mean? take Caps, but, but Perks would probably be my second. Okay. Really? I think it's Yanko's or Perks for me. Yanko's number one or Perks number one? All right. Well, in that case, Yanko's is number zero on your list. It's one or two. Okay, Yanko's number one or Perks number two or Perks number one, Yanko's number two. Did you have any other G2 players on the list? Wait, if we're, if we're oh, overreacting... Wait, oh, you, wait, no, wait. I, thought it, I thought I was going back to like the draft part. <laughs> okay, uh, never mind. If, if we're overreacting to performances, what do you think about Yankos today? Yankos? Probably the best player to play League of Legends. <laughs> the, <laughs> I don't know. The, the best 0-4 release that's ever existed. <laughs> yeah, come on. I think him and Khalid have, are making names for being the best jungler at World. I knew Tarzan was overrated before going into the tournament. You just didn't say it. That's weird. No, I said it. I said Khalid you, was you, the best range yeah, jungler. I said you, you did. You did. You did say no, it. No, but you, it, I told you this secret years ago, and it's, it makes sense. I told him on shows, right? The temptation is, when you've got like an, an opinion that's on the line, is to go, I'll just be safe and not say, I'll wait till it happens, then I'll say, you know, I always thought that. I'm definitely that way. I'm a, I'm a little... I don't you mean. I, I but I, 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 I told him this years ago. The problem is, especially in his case, where like people will flame Loco if they want, even if he's right, right? Even if he said something that's like, a, a pre, like you can appreciate it. Someone might flame him anyway. So I told him, there's no actual downside to making your bold prediction if you really believe it. Because the person who flames you, flames you anyway. But if you, like, if he'd have said that a month ago, like, I think Tarzan's pretty overrated, you know, and he won't be as good. And if he'd have said, like, I think Yankos is better, for example, he would get mad props in about a week from now, right? That'd look amazing if someone could pull that up. I said that when 
now with making my top 20 list. No one watches your content, man. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be on the stuff that I'm on. <laughs> then, we, then I even know you said it. What, what Dora means you cancelled <laughs> our show, so I couldn't say it on our show anymore. What Dora means is he doesn't watch no, your watch content, that. Loco, but he is only willing to entertain the opinions that you express directly to his <laughs> yeah. face. Exactly. <laughs> that's, even that's terrible. <laughs> that oh, even yeah. I sometimes tune out. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I want to go back to something we did last episode, which is we talked about which regions we thought were the strongest. And right. we all said overall, we thought LCK, Korea, was going to be the strongest region. Does anybody want to come back on that one at all? Let's ask Mark, what do you think? Because we all came down at the end, like in terms of overall aggregate strength of all three and taking everything into account, we, we came with LCK as the strongest. Yeah, I was, I was a, I'm, an, I'm an LCK fanboy, always have been. Uh, so I, I probably would agree. It's still a little up in the air because... Hey, they're looking for a caster right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Let's move to Korea. Nah, it's pretty good. I like... It's better than LA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I really like doing nothing. LA's great for that. Um, but I would say... Well, you'll have worlds off still. You know, they still operate the Highlander principle, right? Only one is allowed to come from LCK every year to, to worlds. The others all have to stay in obscurity <laughs> because they're just plebs who cast a tiny little Korean league. Nothing, nothing cool ever. Exactly, happened. no. Why would it? <laughs> all right, I, I would have had probably... LCK, LPL, LEC, and then NA. Um, I, I might flip flop LPL in LCK. Uh, it really depends how bad FPX actually is. Yeah, well, I mean, right now you can't do that though. Like, if anything, <laughs> I wouldn't do if, it yet. If anything, LPL's been well. Okay, that's not fair. I didn't have high expectations of IG given their recent so performance. That, I, I was so the one they, they're, they're overperforming my expectations, but Fun Plus Phoenix is definitely like underperforming. Expectations. Yeah, but I'd yeah. also say even like RNG, even in the game they lost to SKT, they look fairly yeah, yeah, decent. Yeah. So I would say like on aggregate, LPL's maybe even a tiny bit stronger on aggregate. I agree, they've lost their potential champion, which is supposed to be FPX. That sucks if you want well, to evaluate. Uh, I mean, we're only a couple games in, so they could definitely bounce back. They have to if do they, a lot to turn that around, though. There, there's a yeah. It, I mean, if if Phoenix starts looking good, then we're in a position where we might say LPL is the strongest region because of the of IG arguably overperforming. Right. I think both those regions have a really good chance of having all three teams get out. Europe has a really dark horse outside chance in my mind. No uh, way. No. I, yeah, I don't. I don't believe it, but like. Fanatic's play Theoretically, sure, Fanatic can, can come back, whatever. They did it before. They came back from, what was it, 0-3? Yeah, yeah so never we, been done before. Wait, yeah. I think it might have actually been a 0-4 even. Maybe it was 0-4. I forget. Zero either, four either way, like, I'm not going to count <laughs> Fanatic out. Anything can happen, but, um, yeah, and then TL, or excuse me, North America is basically one to two teams at best, potentially zero. So, yeah, that'd be my, that'd be my, my region ranking. Yep, no disagreements there. Prob- I, I think LCK strong number one. And then LPL strong number two. I think I'm pretty fed on those two. Well, two. and uh, LEC has the best team in the world too. So like you know, if you, if I was a they're European raising fan, the average. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I was the European fan, I'd be like, I don't care. I'd re- I want the one number one team. And who cares if I have two monkeys for for the other two teams? Yeah, but that's what tilts me about that whole topic of G2. And remember, it was initially people claiming it was Europeans doing this. It's mainly, as far as I can tell, everyone in the West, even Western fans of North America think Fnatic was going to be really good. Like, I the thought log- they were going to be the, good. Yeah, but the problem with the logic they're applying is it's like if, if, if we bring in a, a fifth seat here and Bill Gates sits down and then we go, well, on average, we all make about 700 million a year. It's like, yeah, because he makes like 900 billion of it. it? Like, yeah. The average is being so skewed. It's, ridiculous. it's almost a worthless statement at that point in time, isn't it? And, and yeah, they, they had some, they, you know, yeah. two best of fives versus G2 can't be completely discounted. No, no, of course not. But but don't MMA math me. You did You're lose not. both of them at the you same did, time. You did you lose, know, and sure. some of those games were like 18-minute, 22-minute exactly. games. Yes. You know, like, they were pretty brutal sometimes. You, what about Clutch versus TL, then? Oh, Clutch went to Game 5 versus TL. Are you going to put Clutch up No there one's also? calling TL the best team in the world, though. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. No one's going, well, TL, I think they're like the seventh yeah. best. So Clutch has got to be, what, a solid 13? But I mean, like, <laughs> no one's even doing that, though. That's the point, you know. I, 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 I pulled that, the though. thorn and inflamed Fnatic uh, fans a little bit on, exactly. d- on day one for having Reckless in the tees despite not winning anything all year. But that was... That was just me. What I hate about the whole G2 Fnatic, they went into two best of fives, they went to game five argument, is as you play a team over and over again, you get better versus that team over Yes, you get familiar with, with what they do. Yeah, so I think Fnatic is really good at playing versus G2, but that doesn't mean it translates like one-to-one that they're going to be as good playing versus the rest of the field. Every team has such different style at this world also. And there's also the fact that, like, speaking of teams loving this particular meta, I don't think Fnatic's loving this meta at all. Like, that stat where they had, like, you know, far and away the best first bloods of every team in the tournament 
that's not going to help you that much necessarily now with these comps. Yeah, and I, I still like, I'm still kind of waiting for the foot to drop before I'm officially like, yeah, Fnatic's sure. always been overrated. It's like, I still. Sure. I, I loved how SKT invaded them at level one and like turned their own their own tricks against them. That was super fun. And it wasn't even like that amazing because because Clig got no help. He was really far behind. He didn't get the smite. Mm-hmm. Um, it was one of those those invades where it was like, eh. It was it was okay for 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 us. I mean, it started that crazy Faker snowball, so it did help Faker out a lot. <laughs> uh. What do you think about Fnatic players saying they're sick? We talked about it a little bit earlier. It's the only way they'll ever be able to say they're all sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only uh, sick lineup they've made in Fnatic for a few years. Uh, I, yeah, that. I feel bad for them if it's true. You know, you can't really because. You don't know, like I, I can't read Weibo. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know, like what's happening with with FPX. Maybe they're all vomiting every night, and I don't know. I can't read it unless someone translates it and gives it to me. I'm not. I don't have that. I, I always think it's weird when an analyst or a commentator, or someone has an inside track to one team's exactly. logic because we don't know the rest exactly. Right, and you yes. use that to justify. Yep failures and shortcomings because like well what happened and what they were thinking was this like you were you were doing a little bit earlier with um griffin griffin is is like yeah that's true maybe they had a plan that they thought was going to work really well and, and, and it just didn't that's true with every team that that loses they had a plan that didn't work and that's why i try to avoid generally getting in, like it, it does give great because it, it gives you an excuse for one team but not an excuse for their right. opponent and i right. think it's great context to have but i, I always try and so. try and avoid you just can't quantify it as well. Right, I just you. don't want to use it. To, I, it's like, hey... Take it into account if you can, but... Yeah, exactly. Also, teams, teams like, overstate or lie about crap all of the course. time because, you know, they're, they'll be like, well, let's find an excuse so that the fans don't insult us on Twitter. Yeah, this, this matchup's 90-10 aside for when you get ganked once. And it's like, oh, cool. <laughs> the real answer <laughs> is... Probably wasn't a good you know, draft then, dude. The real answer is, what do you think of the fact that some of the Fnatic players are apparently sick, right? Zoom in on me. This is the tiniest violin in the world. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. It's a very haunting song. It makes you wonder, what if they brought the best player? No, 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 no. This was screwed over. Who cares? That's the answer. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Great. Win while you're sick and then it'll be an amazing documentary feature. There you go. <laughs> That's the answer. Mm. <laughs> I guess we got our answer. Yeah, I don't know. I, I wish they weren't sick. <laughs> I, I, hate ex- I mean, I hate excuses like that because if you're sick, you're sick. Like, and it's not like you randomly get sick, right? Like, it's not like you flip a coin ten times. And Was it if- the government? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cloud9 hey, was, sick for Rif- Cloud Nine was sick for Rift Rivals, dude. Yeah, there you go. I yeah. knew you have to take care of your body. Like, you have to take care of your players. And also, it's in Europe. It's not like you flew to a different country and you got sick. I think That's true. 100% of the blame falls on you if you get sick. All right. To be fair, a bunch of Cloud9 players come from Europe as well. Yeah. Oh, I was, I, we, we talked about Fnatic, never mind, yeah. 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 I think that's the end of that segment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's do, let's do one. Let's do one more before okay. Mark goes. Okay. Is, uh, this should be shorter. What is what's the biggest surprise we've had for the tournament so far? Oh, I'll go first. FPX sucks. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Surely it's J Team beat FPX. Isn't that a big surprise? Same principle. But yeah. You know, yeah, that's a pretty big surprise, right? Do we have to do different ones? <laughs> you could do that one. No, that's too easy. I'm, let me think of another one. It's kind of hard. I mean, I'm going to Perks as the best player in the entire world, team, but team what if he didn't have a choice and pick him 700th in a draft? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess it really isn't that many so far. I think FPS sucks is a big one. Griffin looks shaky. It was not a big one for me, but maybe for other people it can be. Like, people thought Griffin was potentially a best, like, a number one team coming into Worlds. I'll tell you one I think's a real one. It wasn't for me. This wasn't my... I had them come in third. But I saw a lot of people talking as though Dan One's a favourite for the tournament. Like, a lot of people had them to win this group. I had all, all man, all man up for that one. Potentially be too. a team, you know, if they get the right bracket draw, they can win the whole tournament. Like, listen, it's not off the table, but from the way they've played thus far, I definitely would bet against it pretty heavily. Okay, so I wouldn't say I thought they were a favourite to win the tournament. But I definitely thought they were a top five-ish team and should get out of groups sure. and probably win a best of if, if they get out number one. I, I had them getting out number one. A oh. little, little, little hesitant on that, but they did beat IG, so it's still, sure. it's still in play, I think. A big surprise for me is Kill OP, kind of, because people were talking about how fast the meta was going to be, and like it's going to be all these like incredibly fast tempo teams playing versus each other, all these like scaling teams like SKT, TL might struggle, and then Kale is a pick that's getting constantly banned out. So yeah, the meta being slow and Kale being an OP pick. I wonder how much of the slow meta has to do with how many like good pushing slash control champions there are. Like Tristana is one of the best picks in the meta, but she's not really like a play like really hyphy playmaker, quite like Silas, Akali, Aatrox was last worlds. She 
pushes, she takes turrets, she's really annoying, it's hard to gank her, she's super safe. So when champions like that are in the meta, it's not necessarily, because she doesn't want to scrap, she wants to push. And that can sometimes slow the game down in a sense. So may maybe it's like that. Kale wants to scale, she's also one of the best in the meta. It only takes a couple of picks before, nice slogan like... slogan there. <laughs> Kale wants to scale. <laughs> yeah, I planned that. <laughs> uh, but, but it only takes a couple, like, if you have like five picks in the meta who aren't that aggro, like GP is, is another one, you know? Suddenly you're not that scrappy. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit of Orianna also from team. Yep, and, and you, you put a couple of these together and then suddenly everyone's playing slower games. It's because if you use GP, you're not scrappy, but you are scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Fair play. I'll be here Fair all play. week, so... <laughs> Word play. Listen, if, if Freak can get away with garbage puns for about 10 years and you're all giving him like the Nobel Peace Prize, I should get something, right? <laughs> Mine are at least funny. And I'll just base around one item that no one even uses, except on Udair. <laughs> And it's really fast. Just in case any really good watch. Innovating locket? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> I miss innovating locket. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think for me coming in, it was the biggest surprise was Liquid's performance against AHQ. Like, I was really, really? I was you. appalled by that. Liquid play to the level of their opponent. I, I guess what, when the opponent's I terrible? Know. Buckle up. I've seen him in the LCS. <laughs> I go win, but by the small margin. Yeah. <laughs> I think the player that applies that most to is Jensen. I think Jensen can match up versus the best mids in the world, and then you get games like the AHQ game. He, he's really volatile, and I think he's someone who hasn't ever really gotten his due. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, people have been like, oh, he's the second best mid in North America, but, but he had a split where he led the league. This is when they had best of threes. He led the league by 50 kills. It's like insanity. And like, Somehow he didn't get an MVP. It's like this was a league with double lift and Bjergs and, and all those and guys. And I, yeah, got the MVP so. that year. And I was like, if he's not getting MVP then, this dude is never getting yep. MVP in his life. <laughs> what do you think about his comment? You know why? Maybe I would have been on top 20 list if I that changed was, my that, name to Bjergs. That was just funny. I would have put Jensen on the top 20 list, but I would say he's a competent mid laner. He, he dumpster Crown, dumpster Kuro, dumpster Jahu all last year uh, at Worlds. He sometimes gets dumpstered by Rookie and Caps, but he's also beaten them up once or twice as well. So I think... You know, he, he's like a step or two below truly, truly top, you know, A-plus mid laners. What, what, everyone, what everyone I think is forgetting is because he had his own lag with his domestic career for so long, he didn't yeah. win any championships. He yep. He's now won two. So add that to the already amazing international record. He's got a complete yeah, career now. Out, out, of groups, out of groups yeah. three years in a row, made semis once. Yeah, I mean like... Final of MSI. This is a ridiculous career he, now. People remember the bad. They remember him getting clapped by Faker. They remember his, his shaky hands and, and getting killed by Bjergsen, you know, but they, they don't remember it like... He's actually also had a ton of high moments too. I and mean, he's always gotten outshined by his teammates in terms of not gameplay, in terms of like name. Yeah. Like Jensen and Sneaky, Sneaky's gonna get the spot. Well, and then he has these Oriana games where like everything I'm saying sounds like complete garbage. <laughs> like, this is probably the worst yeah. game I've had to, like, <laughs> to pick the, my battle. This is the worst time, but it's. I, I mean, he did have like a really good LeBlanc claim. Yeah, he, had a, he, he, he beat great. Showmaker, who people were saying was. Everyone was raving about that. Yeah, guy, top 20 yeah. in the world, and he had a really good game versus him. All right, well, I think it's gonna about wrap up our Cloud Connections presented by ATT. Mr. Mark Z, where, Thank you for where can they me. where can they find you? Uh, at the Mark Z at Twitter. It's basically all I'm doing right now. My YouTube channel's dead. I'm too lazy to do anything. I, uh, I just show up on other people's content. Uh, so <laughs> you got your own content too. What's your show? Oh uh, well, I do Hotline League with Travis, but that's technically on his Twitch channel. So I guess I'll plug it. Twitch.tv slash Travis Gaffer. We'll be doing an episode tomorrow Very after good. the games. If anyone wants to tune in, call in show. That's great. We're gonna. I heard you guys gonna, blaming him we're, earlier. We're gonna steal. Yes. I yes. There'll be more of that. Don't I, I worry. Yeah. There'll, that. there'll, there'll be tons, tons of that. Every now and then we'll touch yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. And you know we've got to steal your show concept here in a few minutes. Ooh. To talk to the plebs as well. So. Nice. <laughs> just that's what we did. Like we, we were really lazy about coming up with content, so we just sourced it. We don't need to you know have these sheets. We don't plan anything. It's not we don't plan anything do. either. Like you did blame game. I'm like I'm just gonna look at Reddit and I'm gonna talk about Reddit content. Yeah, but that was work because I had to watch the games. Read the Reddit comment, rewatch the games from the Reddit comments perspective, cut them, highlight them, record myself over Wait, you didn't all have that. An editor? No, I did all of it. Wow. And then I had to put all the effects on it. This is the opposite. This is just call into my show and I'll tell you you're wrong. To be fair, I did enjoy those videos where you flamed Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> they were they were it was a lot of fun, but I've given up on that. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, Mark. Yeah, thanks for having been me. Great. I'm sorry you're not at Worlds me on too. the desk. But we're glad I'll to live, have you yeah. here instead. So we're going to look at C9 in a flash, and then we'll be taking pleb calls after this. Oh, hey, Blubberfish. Yo. How are you doing today? Uh, what am I doing? Uh, we 
Yeah, I'm chilling. <laughs> on the phone. Okay, good. Uh, talking to Nisky. Same? Actually, not same, because I'm talking to you. No, I'm talking to you. Yeah? So, uh, hey guys, it's uh, Blabber here from the Cloud9 LoL team, and I'm going to be talking about how we use our phones at Cloud9 to stay connected. Well, one of our purposes for using our phones is to play uh, mobile games, I guess, like to have fun while we're traveling um, when we don't have anything to do. I, I myself don't play that many mobile games, but I know Sneaky loves to play mobile games. Uh, he's currently playing a game that Rabbitstar recommended to him, so he's having a lot of fun with that. He keeps trying to get me to play his mobile games. It's, I mean, frankly, like my phone is the center of what I do every day. From waking up in the morning, figuring out what the weather is, to you know, what clothes I need to wear, um, telling, you know, I pick up my phone, tell, tell my players, yeah, let's go have breakfast. We meet up downstairs. Uh, once we've eaten breakfast, the next thing I do is I'm picking up my phone, calling Uber, and that takes us to our boot camp. Um, and then once I get to the boot camp, I basically spend half the time talking to our partners, talking to my players, talking to my family. Um, and like the center of my universe is my phone and being able to connect to everybody. Without a good connection, I couldn't do my job. What I mainly use my phone for is to stay connected on social media. I like to use Twitter a lot, um, Instagram, uh, and I check Reddit a decent amount. Probably where I spend like, a lot of my time on my phone either Reddit or Twitch. I find it pretty interesting to see like what people are talking about and uh, I watch Twitch streams pretty much because I mean I can relate. I play a lot of video games and it's fun watching other people. Something I can learn on or if it's funny I can relate with it. So it's something that I enjoy a lot. I think the toughest thing um, when I'm on the road is not being able to uh, to see my family every day um, and with my phone with through at and I'm able to at least FaceTime see their faces send jokes back and forth to each other send videos so it makes me feel even though I'm maybe halfway across the world that I'm still in good communication with my family Act like you're two lovers Hey fish! Finally seeing each other for the first time after Hey! Months. What's up? Hey, but Vincent was talking that whole Vincent! Time. Vincent! Are you serious? I have to say thank you to at and for allowing me able to, to work no matter where I am and stay connected with my company and my family. Thanks at and Hello everybody, we're back. And before we get into your pleb calls, as, as Thorin I'm all right. shifts going. around in his chair all right. awkwardly, um, we are going to talk about some player statistics, of course, brought to you by your favorite search engine, Bing and Microsoft. So first up, we're going to take a look at some lifetime stats for Sneaky versus Griffin, uh, which, or for, versus Viper, sorry, from Team Griffin, of course. And taking a look at Viper, obviously, we're talking about a huge difference in terms of games played. And I mean, one, Sneaky's been to Pro since 2013. Yes, <laughs> and he's been to every Worlds, right? Yes, yeah. every, every single world. I yeah. think he's been to every world. I, you know, I saw the, the stat on the broadcast as well that he has now played in the same number of worlds games as Faker. Even though Faker's made it deeper, Faker missed two years, right? And he now we'll bring there. up the stat for championships and we'll see who did better out the two. Faker was <laughs> <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> Anything jump out to you here, Logo? Sneaky averaging two deaths. I thought he'd have much higher. Like, average two deaths over the course of your life is actually really good as an AD carry. Um, I know Viper has 1.1, sure. but that's still Viper. <laughs> no, no, Griffin I, I, has had insane regular season I'm, games, and where they lose in playoffs, like they just lose pretty quickly. I mean, this is over all, all of the world's games, presumably, right? That's what the career win rate actually means. So in that sense, like, to be fair, if you think where Cloud9 usually is in most of the groups, they never usually ever got the group of death. If you mm -hmm. notice, there's actually one of the harder groups they've had. Usually they have the group that's more of like the borderline, you know, so... I think I guess it makes somewhat sense. Plus, as a player, even in his early days, he was more like a safe player back then when he used to just play Ash and Zyra and stuff. Like, was never exactly a super kill thirsty lane. So I, I agree. He's had a, obviously a bad couple of years more recently, so you'd expect that number to go down, which means it was probably an amazing number yeah, like three would, years ago, if you think about it. Yeah, I'm sure. Because he, he was very stats. dominant in NA yeah. back in the day. Let's take a look at Niski versus Chovy, also from this group, also another Griffin player, and Chovy, one of the breakout stars in recent times in the LCK. Look at the deaths for Chovy, though. Average one point. Oh! <laughs> pretty good. Per game. <laughs> you die less than two times per game as a mm -hmm. star mid laner. Yeah, these are all career stats, everybody. So average kills also much lower than Niski, but again, the KD ratio is still super good over on Chovy's side. Yeah. I mean, average 1.2 
in terms of career is crazy. Holy, I can't believe people have stats like that after having so. Well, the crazy games thing played. is that Viper and Chovy. Viper was at one point one, and Chovy's at one point two. So very similar in terms of. Uh, but Griffin has been pretty dominant sure. overall in the LCK, at least yes. in the regular season. I mean, that's the other thing to mention, by the way. As much as we're saying, well, you know, Sneaky's played for a long time, blah blah blah. To be fair, Griffin players are pretty much primed to have the best stats. Yes, that we bring up because they haven't I had think. a bad season. They've had three splits and they've been in the final three times, and only yep. one time did they not just directly go to the final. So yep. I'm going to guess their average win rate over regular seasons like 80 plus percent, some, <laughs> sure. some really impressive number. It's like Rain over Huni esque where they did Fnatic and then they went Immortals. They just had all good splits. And then Luckily though, you know, they always say in the end it evens out as it did in that scenario. <laughs> so where is he now? Coach. There you go, enough said. I mean, when, when Viper and um, Showmaker get imported into Korea, or not Showmaker, Chovy. excuse me, Chovy, get imported from Korea to <laughs> North America or Europe, then we'll have that evening out. I don't think they're ready to retire yet, Loki. I don't think they're ready to retire yet. So. Ouch. <laughs> we'll see, though. We'll see what happens after this world, because I think we need to see a little bit more from Griffin. So thank you very much for Microsoft. We're going to take another quick break before we do your calls. Please join the Cloud9 Discord. There is Question a channel, channel for the Nine's questions, if you guys have questions, and we will be putting you live on air, unfortunately, after we come back. In the meantime, we're going to take a look at the C9 Worlds Roundtable. We'll see you in a few minutes. Not extreme. Honestly, I would say SKT RNG still. Really? Yeah. Oh, Fnatic? I think Fnatic's good. I think they're really good, but... I think RNG is better. I'd say Fnatic makes it out 100%. Really? 100%? I feel like they're going to make it... Maybe even they're over good. SKT and Orange. Like, they're going to be first? No, I, I think SKT is going to finish first in their group. Really? I mean, just saying, like, I know how strong Damn One is, <laughs> and they couldn't beat SKT. <laughs> so, like, I'm going with SKT going first out of the group. Uh, don't you also know how strong Fnatic is? <laughs> oh, yeah, but, like, you know, just in comparison, I'm going with SKT. <laughs> but I think Fnatic will be the second seed. I, I don't think Orange will make it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think first matters because we're going to get first in our group. Yeah. <laughs> we're not just trying to get out of group. <laughs> so, wait, Eric, who do what you think you're makes it out? <laughs> Eric, did you say who you think makes it out? Um, I would say... I think it's SKT for sure. And then I think it's a toss-up between RNG and Fnatic. What about Clutch? I mean, Clutch is the dark horse of the tournament, so... <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. There's a lot of NA dark horse. If Blabber says Cloud9's a dark horse. <laughs> No, it's a TL. I said TL. I said TL is the dark horse. Cloud9 is Cloud the favorite. Yeah, Cloud9 is the permanent dark horse. <laughs> they always show up to worlds. It's like, yeah, they're like, somehow we're gonna get out of groups, maybe. <laughs> no, it's like the first three games, like, damn, Cloud9 is looking kind of bad. <laughs> Actually, uh, they started 3 0. Yeah, that's the only time they didn't make it out. Yeah, when we started 3-0, that was the only time we didn't make it So out. we don't want to go 3-0. We don't want to dominate too hard right away. <laughs> we, want, we want to save our domination. <laughs> I can't lie, I don't know all of the world songs. I don't know Worlds Collide. Worlds Collide is a shit one. Can we, can we listen to Worlds Collide right now? Wait, yeah. Legends World's Never Die is Worlds the Collide is the shit one. Wait, where's KDA? That's not a world not song. A world song. It, it got released during Worlds, but it's not a world song. That one's my favorite. Okay. Just say the best. Yeah, like best and worst, probably. The best one is... I feel like most people will agree that... Or will say that Warriors was probably the best. Wait, really? I, I really like Warriors. Disagree. Ooh. I, I like, I probably like Rise. I don't know. Really? I mean, the, I don't know. The, the music video was really cool. And I hope they keep doing it. Wait, was that the that's one that's where Uzi was vain? Yeah. yeah. Like, just, it adds a Actually, lot I, to the atmosphere. I like the video, but I don't like the song. I'd say Warriors. The Warriors song, is a better but song. If you consider so the video, the video was good. Are you, are you guys serious? What? Legends Never Die. Legends Never so Die good. has to be the best, yeah. Wait, and what? then KDA is definitely second. Yeah, <laughs> I put, I put that one second. Legends never die. Legends never die. I think it's first. Yeah. I really don't remember half of these songs. Because before Blabber was born. I remember. Yeah, I remember Rise. Do you remember Legends never Le die? Legends never die. Okay. The other three I don't really remember. It, it's because they're like too far away, you know. Okay. What about what about worst song? Worlds Collide 2015. Ooh, what is Worlds Collide? I feel like it has to be a bad one. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't remember. Remember. yeah, that's the one I don't remember as well. Ignite when it came out is like really edgy. Oh, everyone hated Ignite the first, and then it was like slowly getting more people to like it. I guess. Yeah. I mean, it just it just blue balls you yeah. the whole time with the drops. <laughs> Niski, you really need to fill Blobber in on what it sounds like. I think you have to I, say I really that. 
What does Legends Never Die sound like? No, he knows yeah, that. I, you gotta sing for us, sorry. I'm gonna need some singing. I'm starting to think you don't even know what the sound song is like. I do. Oh yeah, sure. sure. If you think it's your best, then you should be able to sing it. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing. Oh, he's like, <laughs> oh, that one. Oh, oh my Legends God. Never die. Now I remember because you just said the title of the song. Oh, never, man. You didn't uh, even say the oh, second yeah, sign, yeah. the second line. Oh, I, um, they become a part of you. That's what it is. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We weren't even a part of last year, though. We no. have to be a part of this year. Yeah, this I mean, year we'll we're top four. four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we were about, we, we, I'm hoping that video. it's a video and that we're, we actually play a major part in it this time. I don't think we will because it's going to be IG's path, remember? I, I feel like Fnatic will There was be ambition in taking down all the teams he fought. But IG didn't face us. So we're just not in it again. That would suck. Oh, that would really Fnatic suck. Just like clapping us or some shit. <laughs> Fnatic just beating us up in the background. Like, Fnatic fly swats us and IG comes along oh, with a bigger shit. fly swatter. Just Weepo is just gonna be in there. Oh god. Oh the Weepo face? Weepo versus licorice. Yeah, you The Weepo face in the background. <laughs> There's no video, it's just Weepo's face. Welcome back. This is the most unpleasant part of the show where we talk to plebs <laughs> and answer your pleb questions. But we're glad we're in a more EU-friendly time zone now, so you don't have to stay up until 5 a.m. maybe. So first up, if you guys want to ask questions, you can come into the C9 Discord. You'll be screened throughout the show. That's why we do this You'll last. Be screened. <laughs> you will be screened. Uh, we are the, you know, we have the TSA there to make sure that there aren't going to be anybody getting into these calls. We won't want there. And <laughs> Actually, we have Ace, who I know from Discord well. So we're going to get him onto the show with your question. What's up, Ace? How's it going, man? Good, thanks. And you? Good. Nice to hear your voice. What question do you have for us today, buddy? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just laughing. Fan. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so I'm a Fnatic fan, and uh, I'm wondering... Con congratulations. Uh, is <laughs> is Brox the weakest link of Fnatic? Is it his hero pool or general impact? Okay. What are you guys' thoughts? Well, well before we answer, what, what do you actually think on that? Do you have a take on that? Uh, I think it's, he's definitely been off the first two games. Like, you know, he's not his usual self. Again, he is sick, but seems to be something a bit more deeper. Okay. Like mm. local, we, we've obviously had this discussion a million mm. times and I was sure the whole Brox and Fnatic thing. It's one of the most famous narratives around Fnatic this year. So at this point in time, at Worlds, after a couple of games, where do you come down on it? Like, is, is Brox a, a, a one of the... Like, there has to be some weak points to Fnatic. Every team has them. So is Brox a one of them? Well, the thing is, when Brox looks good, or it's when Fnatic as a team looks good, when Brox, Hillisan, Nemesis, it's three of them can work together and he gets none of the credit, almost all the credit goes to Hillisan, and when it doesn't work, almost all the blame goes to Broxa, right? <laughs> so I would want to see Broxa in different team and different environments and see how he can do when he's given a more of a free leash because, yeah, that's our narrative. Like, does Fnatic have a system? Who benefits most from the system? It's usually the jungler, so that's where points are taken off from Broxa, but I think he is a hard player to judge. My gut feeling says, like, if you had this kind of success over these years, and you can also prove yourself mechanically, like, this guy can't be stupid. Like, I know the meme is, like, Broxa and that whore... The orc, like the orc okay. emoji, right. like Brox the smash, like he's a stupid jungler. But I just don't buy into that. I don't think Brox is the weak link. If I have to point at anyone, it would probably be Reckless or Bwipo. I think Reckless and Bwipo play very one-dimensionally, and they also benefit from playing in a team like Fnatic, where everyone has such defined roles. Isn't the strength, too, of Fnatic, and obviously I know what I've seen from the European playoffs, and I know what I've seen from Worlds so far, but isn't, isn't the main narrative that they're an excellent roaming unit, like you're saying, with Hillisong and Broxa together? So isn't it a little bit more difficult to evaluate the individual strengths? Like, Broxa hasn't looked amazing to me, but... I wouldn't say he's necessarily like a huge liability. The big liability. problem with this is a lot of people don't actually know where the narrative about Brox and not being that sick a jungler comes from. They think it just comes from Caps leaving Fnatic, Fnatic not being the best and people mm. trying to find a way to hate on Fnatic. What they ignore is, you can go back to my shows like the narrative where Troy used to do with Kelsey two years ago and way before they even had like Caps in his prime, that used to be the narrative that the analysts used to tell me there was like Brox is a good player but in that Fnatic, you know, he wins because he has three winning lanes and he just farms up and he wasn't even necessarily like a pressure jungler or the guy who invades the opponent he was kind of like in the dream scenario for a rookie jungler you know like exactly the sort of team you'd want to be on where you can look good in your good games mm -hmm. and in the other games you just chill then when he got prime caps last year 
The problem with that is Prime Caps, as we've seen, is more than just a mid laner. He, he is, in, in a sense, also comparable to Faker in that he transcends even just his role in the game, the effect he has on his teammates, how the jungler plays with him. So my big problem with that one is I, I always wanted to know what would Broxer look like without Caps? And I'd have to say without Caps hasn't been as good, but if you acknowledge that Caps was in any way helping him last year, I actually think Broxer the jungler has improved year on year on year. The guy was just a farmer two years ago, did improve a bit for the last year, and then now I think he's actually been forced by the necessity of not having Caps. And in fact, himself having a rookie in that position in Nemesis, he's had to level his game up a bit. So I actually think in his career, I think he's near his career height, not at the moment in these games, but of where he is overall. But I do think if I had to pick the five players in Fnatic, I think he is the worst of the five. I think I'd put Whipple maybe after him, but the difference with the other ones is, I think I could make like a number one team of the entire West with any of the other players. I'm not so sure with Broxy he could. There's a lot of players I'd go with before him personally. Sure, but isn't the strength, like as you're saying, there has been a bleed of individual talent from Fnatic. Isn't it kind of amazing that they are where they are right now despite having downgraded pretty significantly yeah, but on, a play, on a pound for pound, player for player level. That's why the person, that, uh, a point you're completely correct about is there's a zero sum game of credit, right? Everyone can't have all the credit <laughs> and everyone can't have no credit, right? So if, so if last year I'm giving a lot of the credit to Caps for how he defined the player, I have to say the person I give a lot of credit to this year is Hillisang in the game. Sure. The system just seems to run around him in all ways. If he's at his best, if he has his picks, that's when Fnatic's this amazing team early game. And then you've got to look at their coach, Youngbuck. Like, I think Youngbuck absolutely worked miracles at times this year. There was times when he was doing band-aid fixes but different is you do a band-aid for two weeks he was doing band-aids for half a split that were working like this guy I, I think how he reformulated the talent minus caps is amazing so I just give a lot more props to Youngbuck personally I'd give some props to Nemesis himself he is not caps don't get me wrong but he's also not a scrub like Nemesis holds his own versus sure. caps and that's why G2 and Fnatic kind of match up really nicely because Nemesis doesn't get rolled over Sure. All right. Well, thanks a million, Ace, for the question. Let's go to the Great Panda Man for another one. Hello, Great Panda Man. Hello? Hello? Do you like bamboo? <laughs> <laughs> You're missing your shot. Oh. Well, sorry, Antonio Brown. We're going to have to remove you, mate. You didn't live up. Right. You weren't a team player, so I'll bring another player in. All right. We'll wait for another, another one right now. I'll be here any minute. This is why you never work with animals, children, or fa well, I've already said animals. Uh... <laughs> All right, Ancraft, you're up next. Uh, hi there. Um, my question to you guys, with, with what you guys touched on last episode uh, regarding player burnout and injury, sure. how would you personally construct a season or year of competitive League of Legends, whether that's with or uh, without two splits? And what format would that be in? Okay. Cool. We love talking about formats. I, obviously, <laughs> get rid of spring. I think that's the first thing we're all going to say. Spring means so little. And also, it's so weird. Teams getting first in spring split, getting a lot of points. It really messes with the world system. Whenever you get into the later half of the year, like, did the first place team from spring really deserve to go to Worlds based on points alone? So I think that's something we can all agree on. There's two simple ones, and you can decide... You extend summer and get rid of spring. From these two simple concepts, you can make a million variants, but they all work better than what we have at the moment. Number one is there's got to be more tournament play. The thing I've learned from esports is the most exciting thing about tournaments, uh, about esports is tournament players, bracket yep. players. So if you only have, for teams who don't win their region, the two playoffs and maybe Worlds, that ain't enough. I, I need more than that. So get rid. So whatever solution you have, more, more bracket player. And then the second one for me is more breaks. That's the problem yes. with the burnout. Like you can't, nobody, uh, there's no it game I'm aware of where you, you can't hard. play nine weeks in a row at a peak level. You can't do it. You can't prep for nine weeks in a row. Yep. Like the great thing about Counter-Strike is it's oversaturated with how many tournaments, but the concept that you just have a tournament for five days and then in theory, you might have two weeks off or a week off. That is such a great premise to stop you burning out. You immediately get the reset. And people might not know this, but European Counter-Strike pros, for example, always lived at home anyway. So they already, in their off time, are literally in their home environment with their friends and their dog and their girlfriend. And like in that scenario, of course, you're gonna be your most relaxed, your most stress-free. Whereas you put someone in a team house, they have to play nine weeks in a row, then go to an international tournament, then come home. And you wanna kill the person. You can see how that's, that, that's, that'd be <laughs> stressful. This way. Uh, Loco's personal experience. I mean, listen, we're, we're older figures, but I can tell you when we go on the road for like six weeks, eight weeks you start forgetting what life is, don't you? You get yeah. burned out like a morpho. It's also, there's, there's like nothing to do. To, well, I mean, 
it's hard because it changes your lifestyle so much. It, it sort of leads you into an unhealthy lifestyle, which I think is different because a lot of these teams at least have houses or facilities here where they're fed well and everything like that. But at the same time, players want to go home. And I think to, to touch on that point, like, you know, right now we talked about it. January is when league starts. Mid-November is now when it ends. And then you have All-Stars. And it's just insane because by the time you get to December, if you're starting the, the third week in January, you're basically going to be right after Christmas or the holidays, you're going to be right back into the team house. So where is your break? Mm -hmm. Where is it? you got like two weeks off a year. It's, it's, it's ridiculous if you're the best team. So you don't have time to heal. But there's many other reasons besides physical healing that lead to these mental. kind of a mental and emotional Spiritual. burnouts. Spiritual <laughs> burnouts. <laughs> Existential. Also, yeah, that's just the way he was going. <laughs> mental. <laughs> also, the crazy thing is, right, focus so hard on building global leagues all around the world. And then there's only two times in a year they really interact, which is MSI and Worlds. You can talk to me about Rift Rivals. You can talk to me at All-Stars. Those tournaments don't really matter. But what's the point of building all these global leagues if you're only going to have well, to interact twice well, a year? It, the problem is, is that interacting like 14 leagues or however many they have can only really happen logistically twice a year because it's just too vast of, a, of an experience. But I think that if you started, let's say, if you collapse, you keep MSI, right? You keep it in the middle of summer. You collapse it into... Uh, you collapse the, the spring and summer splits together, and let's say you start in April mm -hmm. as opposed to November. So, And what I will say, too, is to, to touch on Thorne's point, is that in Overwatch League, one of the things that, that we've done has been, even though we run a league, so your record matters, we did something clever, which is that we created a tournament every five weeks where we, have, we break it up into four stages, and at the end of every stage, the top eight teams are competing in a tournament for hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's not affecting the record, but, but it's also like usually the last, uh, the last game's on that patch. So teams will give it their all because they're not, you know, there's going to be a patch and the meta will change. But you also, it creates this really like hype moment, which is great. And I think that you could probably do something like that more with League of Legends if you really wanted to, which is to have, you know, a tournament, a, a regional tournament that leads into MSI, right? Um, you, so you don't lose that playoffs that you would have at the end of spring. Mm. I like the idea of like minor tournament, minor tournament, minor tournament, mega tournament at the end. Like yeah. keep Worlds what it is. It yeah. is the most exciting time Except of the year. Except change it to double elimination bracket. Yeah, I, all, all that good stuff. And fix all the format there too. Mm. All the stuff they'll never do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Great Panda Man. You want another chance at this, huh? All right, what do you got? Oh, wait, I didn't second, wait a second. Panda Man, what's up? Hey. How's it going, guys? Big fans of the show. Uh, I just wanted to ask if there was any best of fives between teams that you don't think will make it out of plans or maybe just won't end up meeting in the bracket stage that you would like to see some potential best of fives. Cool. Mm. I think TLIG is the obvious one. Like, they can't play a best of five together unless they meet further down the tournament semis. They can't meet in quarters. I mean, another obvious one for the same reason, G2 Griffin. I've wanted to see that all year. <laughs> a full best of five between those two teams. Then we'll really see what both are made of. I mean, it depends, too, because Group C, there's going to be one of the teams, SKT, Fnatic, or Royal, that's not going to get out of groups, and we're not going to see any best of fives, right? So that kind of sucks as well. It's very customary for Royal to meet SKT in a best of five and have their dreams crush and exit worlds, and yeah, we might not get to see that. <laughs> That's true. I do enjoy, I do enjoy that storyline. Conversely, there are also best of fives that I'm going to be forced to see, like whoever is the second seed in Group B playing another number one seed that's just going to be horrific and a free ticket to the semis, so... <laughs> I don't know. I, I agree, like, at least some of the, at least with some of those other ones, we definitely have the possibility, well, not definitely, we have the possibility of seeing those matchups later on in the bracket, whereas, like, one of the teams I mentioned, we're just never going to see a best of five at all, right? So, and, you know. Put it this way, if Fnatic doesn't get out, take Fnatic versus any good team, because yep. a, of course it's a series team, you want to see them play a real match. In Europe, You also, also. want to see how tested they are, because the big problem with that group, the, the Group C one, is it doesn't matter who goes out. Even if Fnatic lost every game and went out, they could still make the case, which would be totally legit, of like, we would be way better in best of five. Sure, yeah. And since it was just a bunch of best of ones, I wouldn't even dispute that. I mean, I'd say to them, yeah, unfortunately, this tournament starts with best of ones, so you don't get to go through. But I totally get it. If you are any of the top five or six teams in the world, you want to at least go out in the bracket phase. So you've got a chance to properly play a best of five, show everything you've got. So basically, any team that doesn't make that phase, who was one of the top five, six teams, 
uh, feel hot. That they should feel hot done by. Also, from Fnatic's perspective, one thing that probably infuriates them is they look at the Splice group and they're like, "We beat you multiple times throughout the season. We placed higher than you, and we get the worst group." Like yeah. that's probably that drives them insane. All I'm gonna say is this: if reckless. Splice makes quarters, exactly. Yeah. Reckless, ridiculous. you pulled it all wrong, mate. Don't complain to the camera or to like the Fnatic. Thing. Complain about Riot on Reddit. There you go. <laughs> make a Reddit thread. Make a tweet. I'll let you know, Riot. Want to change the world? Tell you, me. <laughs> it's true, Riot. Throw out the three of us at this desk, call Riot out, and it changed things for the positive. <laughs> Do you want to be like the one who didn't? <laughs> also, I will say that uh, Riot listens. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry, I was just flying me or something. Sorry. <laughs> I will say that Riot does listen to Reddit way too much. Where they put so much stock in it, guys, is ridiculous. You just anyway. know they used to watch someone in Insight. They'd probably be really mad. Oh, they, they were. They were. They'd go, this they stinks. Were. They still are. And then one of the other guys would go, oh, was it, <laughs> sorry, I, I had one of the uh, interns in early. And they'd go, no, no, this show. All oh, right, sorry. <laughs> so, oh, God, Duncan. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Uh, Praydor. Hello, Praydor. What's your question? Hello. M many analysts describe Tarzan with similar ways as Clear, Clear Love was described in his time. Farms well, created team fights, mostly counter ganks. Do you think that he should be more proactive in early game where at international level where it's harder to get leads in lanes alone without your jungler? Fair enough. I mean, you were talking about this earlier that Tarzan did have an early game plan in some of their matches. Just because it was, I, I found it a bit tough to hear the accent, but that the premise was, right? Yeah. Tarzan yeah. from Griffin, he said was something like, is a bit like how people characterize Clear, Clear Love as a farming team. Because yes, he was the guy where people say he didn't have a gang and he just farmed up and then was, a, was a, another... Carry. Carry in the team fight. Is that not the entire premise? Yes, and right. and like does he asked, does it do we think that that's a liability more or less right. at the world championship? But you know, from the games that we've seen so far, I would say Tarzan's actually been quite active in the early game compared to his reputation coming into coming into worlds. Yeah, the Talia game, the league game, he was active in both, so it's hard to call him out on it yet. But right. I think we are gonna I mean we have to see more games. We've only we haven't seen that many games, like two games per team, three games per team. Yep. Oh, well, only group say, D have we seen. What I would games. say is this, the, the key distinction here, and I'm not calling this particular person out, but whenever you have what's like an easy narrative like that, well, this person is kind of like this person. Like when we made the contrast of Doin being high. Well, the difference is Doin isn't the best mid laner, but even just as a player, he's been in MVP conversations. Like high was never even close to the best. So in the same sense that there's similarities, but differences, the similarity in that regard between Clearlove and Tarzan is a very good one. People have brought that up before. The problem is, where, Ta where Clearlove does not match up to Tarzan is I personally don't think Clearlove actually at the time could have played the other style. I never thought he was some like god tier mechanical jungler or anything. Mm. The thing with Tarzan is, is he has the insane mechanics where he could just be like Yankos if he wants and gank all day long. And he should have the lead. I'll even add in as well, when you consider how many times Tarzan has had accounts at the top of Korean solo queue, do you imagine in Korean solo queue he's playing a measured game where he sat back, never ganking, like shot calling? No, of course he's ganking all the time in solo queue. So he clearly. And you have do to it. have good mechanics exactly. to hit the top of solo queue. For me, like, that's so important. For me, you can definitely disagree with it, and you can say it's not in the meta. But it's clear that he's made the active choice to have this style. Like he thinks this is the right style to play. Yeah, I mean, he's made his name on Talia, Sejuani, Garner, Lee. It's hard to talk about a jungler he hasn't been amazing on. Yeah. I, I just want to say, I, I just want to say, like. We've seen a very different Tarzan than we expected coming into this tournament. And yes, it's only been two games, but like I think that just deserves a little more time to sort of play itself out mm -hmm. as, as a whole. We need more games. I also think just generally, because you haven't seen him play much internationally, Koreans versus Koreans is a whole different game within a game of their own thing that they've got their past histories, mm. having played each other on solo queue, what the coaches want. International players are different kettle of fish and tally, which is why you can expect to sometimes see these players and teams playing a completely different style of player. All right, we have phased 343. Three. Hello, phase 343. Three. What's up? Hello. Um, LS made an interesting tweet earlier today after watching okay. J Team versus uh, Gam. Okay. And he said that probably the cleanest macro game, uh, despite mechanical mistakes, is probably the cleanest macro game he's seen at group so far. Do you agree or disagree with I think this? Gam beating J Team was the cleanest macro game. Yes, he said uh, probably highest quality. Okay. Right. First of all, appreciate you, LS. You find a way to make the ridiculous statement <laughs> on anything. Like, LS is the guy who would walk into, like, the Burger King and be like, Big Mac, please, and uh, Happy Meal. And they'd be like, oh, sorry, sir, I can't serve you that. How dare you, right? <laughs> Big Mac. It's like, you know. So I I'm amazed he managed to find a controversial take about Gam versus Jason. But he did it. This guy's amazing. I told you. He can, this guy's like a bloodhound. He can just find that controversy wherever it is. Oh, whoa, whoa, LS, where are we going? Like, but... 
The problem with that is I don't know what he means by that. Like he means in the most extreme, like isolated circumstances, take all the name plates off. Like if you watch that, maybe it looked like, you know, technically they had the cleanest macro. The problem with that is it might not even be that crazy a comment. I, I can't remember that much of the game myself. But I'll just say it's never, it's ne that, that comment is never going to go d down well with normal fans because they're going to think, well, the, you know, the, the cleanest game should be SK Telecom. Or I mean, I thought G2, G2, yeah, I thought exactly. G2 Griffin was super So the problem clean. is just the names are going to throw people off on that one. So, so even if LS is right, he's never going to be accepted as right on that one. <laughs> for, for me, vocab for LS is very different from vocab for other people. When LS says, oh, this team won a draft, it's not like he's completely wrong, but how he explains, like, how this team's draft is better is very different from like 90% of how other analysts You have to do know it. his, yeah, like yeah. you say, you have to know his vocab, what he means by concept. He sometimes means something sort of different, doesn't he? So I'm sure he'll explain it in a way where that draft or that game had the cleanest macro, but what he defines as clean macro is going to be very different from what other people define as cleanest macro. So yes, that comment can have truth in it, but realistically, I, I, I like you, I don't think I watched that game in like, where I was super glued and I was looking at the macro, I'd have to go back and watch it to really talk about how good the macro was, but I'm sure majority of the world is going to By the disagree. way, though, this is why LS is actually a brilliant on-camera personality. There are already people, while I talk now, going back and re-watching a game yep. they never wanted to watch the first time just to find out if LS is wrong. <laughs> LS is actually, he's actually hyping up the garbage games. some of the secrets we pioneered on this show long ago, Monty. See, we see, figured this business out ages ago. <laughs> ages ago. <laughs> just hyping up the garbage there. All right. Uh, we've got one more call. S-L-L-F-J. Hello, S-L-L-F-J. What's your question? Hello there. Um, my question was how Impact ranks up against the all-time great top laners. And I personally believe that he would be like way up there amongst the all-time greats. Okay. Here's the interesting I think there's a reasonable opinion. I'll give you an interesting take that I think sets the table for this discussion well. Right? People will probably expect I'm going to go against this because I hate overvaluing players. So, for example, I don't think the fact that Dyrus played in LCS for like five years means that longevity makes him a better top laner than no. some beast top laner. He was also notoriously bad at international. So my, yeah, so my point is, like, I'm not just going to give you points like Impact for playing a million years. But the one area, which might sound counterintuitive, where I give him a very high remarks is after seeing enough time in League of Legends of top lane players, there never has been a player who could only be a carry and play all eight or you know, nine years as a, as a top lane pro. You could never only be a tank and play all eight pro. So being as that role at this point in time is basically about being able to play carries and bruisers and tanks depending on your era. I think you should judge top laners based on both when they get the resources and then they carry and when you play away from them and they're not. Mm. Now the point here is impact scores very highly on the latter when you play away from him, it's, he literally has made a career from that. His office is having a slightly losing matchup, not losing as much as he should, and then doing something in a team fight. Like, that is amazing. And so there's so few players who are really actually being at a world class level. Low economy. Who pass. did that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, you very rare example, Odo Amni in Europe. You know, there's not many that have been top players. So while I, I can't ever say he's like the best top, top player in them, because I'd have to go with the carries, I'd have to go with the Smebs, the Shy, sure. Flame. These players, obviously, at their, at their peak, if you build a team around them, are the best. But the difference is, some of those players, like, like my boy Flim, wouldn't rank as highly if you play away from him completely. So I, I think like Impact's kind of deceptively high up on that list, you know. I also think Impact is having a very good world so sure. far. I mean, we look, we literally look at his performances, and we're like, oh, okay. So against Dom, uh, against Dom Juan, he was doing super well and got the, you know, got the big hits on the Aatrox versus the Vlad that helped him win the game. I don't think the Gangplank game was his fault because what happened in that game was. They lost vision control, and you just can't play in the in the darkness with gangplank if you're not setting up your barrels. So it's kind of whatever. And then the other game, he basically saved against AHQ by trip, yeah, by getting the one v three with yeah the one v three at the end of the game. So it wasn't his fault they were behind, and he saved their bacon in many ways. So I think he's having a very good world so far. So they're very easy storylines. Like player A does really well in regular season and bombs in playoffs. Player B has a very quiet regular season and ramps up for playoffs. Impact has always been player B. Yeah. He gets underrated compared to player A. And player A, like a really good example of it, is Huni. This is amazing in regular season, bombs in playoffs a lot mm. of times. And if you ask a casual fan who's better, Impact or Huni, I think most would side with Huni. And Huni gets all the resource, Huni gets all the attention. And so, yeah, he's decorated where Impact is a 
quietly good player. The things that impact as well, he TPs better than other people. As you talked about, he loses better than other people. And that's not something very flashy, and that's not something people like talking about, so he's not going to get as much attention and as much recognition. The only thing is, though, I will say, if they, if they play away from you on your own team, unless it's an era where they play away from everyone in the tank and the ha tank has to be the top laner, that also implies your own team doesn't think you're the best player on your team. So, like, you also shouldn't be, like, the greatest player from that. Because remember, the original context was, like, greatest top laners of all time. I mean, it's I, hard to put you too high on that list. I, I, don't, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that because there's always, like... You have to consider that if they gave Impact more resources, would the net effect be more, like if Double Lift gets no resources, what's the difference between Double Lift with no resources and Double Lift with a lot of resources? There might be a huge difference. But here's the counter there. to that, is if we had Double Lift and we had the Shy, would we give the Shy some more resources than we give Impact? Sure. Of course. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's so, fair. So, so on the other side, I'm also not going to go too far and boost him from that. So if you want to go top greatest players ever, when you consider longevity, championships around all regions, again, playing through bad metas and against overperforming against players, he's definitely on the list. Like if we're talking like top 20 top players, he's easily on that list. Also, Maybe, say top 10. Yeah. You, it's just the difference is he's not going to be competing with Smeb and them for the top of the list. No. You know. Also, Impact went to NA and he didn't shrivel. So many players like make their careers in Korea they come to NA or they go to Europe and they shrivel and Impact actually flourished in NA. Well, my course. favorite one is that now, obviously, Impact is a resident player, right? So he no longer counts as an, as an import. Yep. I tell you one team who certainly themselves bought into a narrative too much, Cloud9. Mm -hmm. They didn't mind letting Impact go because they thought, ah, what does that matter? You know, he was never a carry player. Anyway. We've got this licorice guy who looks super sick. Tell you what, right now, I'd take Impact over <laughs> licorice in a heartbeat. <laughs> it wouldn't, right? I mean, Rick, licorice isn't a scrub. And who would you take if I had a gun against your head now? Of course, I'd take Impact. But, <laughs> you know. I mean, there's but Especially considering, like yeah. you're saying, they're both NA That's players, what I mean, so though. Yeah. I think even his own team actually mm -hmm. sort of like bought into the narrative a bit too much on that one. They didn't give him as much of a chance, you know. <laughs> anyway, whatever. That's the end of that call. <laughs> All right. I think that's going to I think that's gonna do it. For us today, guys, thank you, plebs, for your calls. Really appreciate that. So, remember, any memes at all, submit them using the hashtag, the nines It doesn't have to Twitter. be that template. You can you make don't have your to own use the template. if you've got something funny. Yeah. We'll make a tweet later on. Uh, you can check out all the full episodes. We will have the VOD of this, if you missed part of it, right here on Cloud9's Twitch channel. Immediately after this, we will also be putting it up on the Insight on Esports YouTube channel. I've also been putting it up on Spotify. I am waiting to get approval through Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts, so we're working on that one. Don't worry about it. Follow this channel, Cloud9's Twitch channel. We will be back on Wednesday at this exact same time, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Central, European time, standard, standard time. time. Summertime, whatever. Yeah, summertime, whatever it is. It's 11 p.m. for you people in Central Europe. So we're going to be back after, day after tomorrow on the 16th to wrap up the first round robin of groups. And we are going to be having Froggen on as a guest. So he and Thorin can gaze lovingly into each other's local eyes. local can tell him how he's like the ninth best mid laner <laughs> in this room. <laughs> he's overrated. Oh my God. Good. I will, I will, look, I will look forward to... Uh, Better than Bjorks in this split. <laughs> I will look forward to moderating this. So thank you for watching the Nine Summoning Insight presented by AT&T. We will see you in a couple days. I'm not crazy. I'm just local. <laughs>